Texas, a lone star shining bright. Boy, it's good to be back. We're going to light them up, aren't we? Bigger, badder, faster. This track takes a lot of discipline. No limits. Everything is bigger in Texas. Victory Lane has welcomed many familiar faces. Stars born, legends solidified. This place tells all. Separates contenders from pretenders. There are no limits when it comes to the Fort Worth track. We'll know quickly who's fast and who's just a few steps behind. All over his tailgate. Hard in the outside wall. Oh, no. Texas is back, baby. Race day starts now on FS1. Oh, yes, we are ready for race number seven of the season for the Craftsman Truck Series. Tonight, the tailgaters are back on a mile-and-a-half track. This one has no limits. Fort Worth has seen its share of winners. Will it be a familiar face in victory lane, or will a first-timer two-step his way to the checkers? This is Texas, and this is race day. Welcome in on FS1 to the race day studios. I'm Kaylin Vinci alongside my friends here on the Truck Series, Trevor Bain, Tom Bodine, who has won at Texas a lot. But tonight is extra special, right? Why is that the case? Well, you know, winning is special everywhere, right, Trevor? It doesn't matter if it's a, a short track like Hickory Motor Speedway in a street stock or, or <laughs> Winning the Daytona 500 Ooh, yeah. in a cup car. <laughs> Winning is special, but tonight, the winner of this race in Texas, this is the 50th race, Craftsman Truck Series race at Texas Motor Speedway. So that's a nice little asterisk to have next sure to your is. name in a record book. <laughs> that's right. Well, I like it because it's the next one, Todd. It's the next one that's available to go win. There you go. But I want to know what the over-under odds are for the word treacherous tonight because we're going to hear that at least 100 times. I've heard it a few times already this weekend. Uh, this racetrack is so difficult for drivers, so if you're going to win, you got to make sure you make it to the end because that's, that's tough it. to do here. It's definitely treacherous. We probably are going to say that a lot. I like that word. A that's an SAT <laughs> word right there. Okay, let's go back to the last race we had, though, guys, on the short track. It was Martinsville Speedway where Christian Eckes was able to get the big victory, big moment for Christian and the 19 team. Two-time winner so far this season, the only series regular to have multi-wins at this point in the season. We're going to hear more from Christian later on in the show, but we have a mile and a half racetrack tonight. Do you think he can win tonight? I, I definitely think so. I mean, he's already the first driver with multiple wins this season, uh, but he has multiple wins at mile and a half. So he's won at Vegas. True. He's won at Kansas. He wants to add Texas to that list, uh, but I wouldn't put anything past Christian Eckes right now. I mean, he was not pleased with his truck. We heard him talking after practice, and he was like, ah, it's sixth to eighth place. After qualifying, when he's on the front row, he's like, ah, uh, it's okay, and you're like, dude, you're on the front row. Yeah. This thing's yeah. obviously pretty good. Yeah, that's that's pretty good when you're not happy of sitting on the front row, right? <laughs> but you know, I, I'm gonna look back. This kid's good everywhere he goes. You know, you look back at last year, his four wins. First one was at Atlanta, right, which we call a speedway now because it's about drafting. Second race, Darlington, probably one of the toughest racetracks on the planet that there is to race on. Then he goes to uh, Kansas mile and a half fast what we normally see the trucks he did a great job and then mile at phoenix should have won the championship if he was there but he did a great job so this kid can drive anywhere so yes, to can. win another mile and a half tonight yeah no problem hey you picked him last week you were yeah, right you'll force yeah. me right into hey. it i'll take it Ooh, all right we're gonna hear from christian though as i mentioned a little bit later in the show but take a look at this race to the top winners this season and their respective playoff points christian is at the top Corey heim follows him nick sanchez who was our daytona winner raja caruth won at las vegas now christian eck is currently leading the group with more than double his his closest competitor so good for him but let's talk about Corey Heim for a minute he's been very strong throughout the course of the season for more on Corey and his team we head out to Texas Motor Speedway to our pit reporter Josh Sims not wearing a cowboy hat out in Texas <laughs> but Why what, not, Josh? What, what is the latest you can tell us on Corey well, yeah, I dropped the ball on that, but there's still time. I might find a cowboy hat before the end of the night. But, you know, for the 11 team of Corey Heim, the bar is set a little bit higher, right? And we look at the numbers. They're fantastic. Top 10 in every race. They've got a win under their belt. Coming off a 10th place finish at Martinsville. And for this team, that's a little bit of a letdown. And I caught up with crew chief Scott Zipidelli a little bit earlier, and he said when you're at this point, 
every detail matters. You can't overlook anything. And for them, last week wasn't up to the standard of this team. But as they turn their attention to tonight, this 11 team for Corey Heim. Corey's looking for his first win on a mile and a half track that is not a super speedway. Well, they qualified 14th. They've got some work to do, but Corey feels good about the truck. Now let's see if he can work his way through the field and find that win tonight, Caitlin. Thank you so much, Josh. Great insight there. We'll check in with you throughout the course of the show. We heard him talking about last time out, a disappointment for them. If your worst finish and you're upset about his 10th, <laughs> you're doing pretty good, right? You would think Corey Heim finished 30th last weekend. <laughs> After the race, he called me. He's disgruntled. Yeah. You know, he's like, man, we were awful. It's kind of like Christian Eckes today yeah, in practice. Exactly. Uh, but he was still in the top 10. So that is the standard that they've set. And to Corey, he wants to be a contender to win every single weekend. He thinks he has the ability. He knows he has the ability. Uh, and you look here, just look at the top tens. I mean, that stat to me, to only have one race outside the top 10 in the last 22 starts, that speaks to the consistency and maturity of this driver. But I know here at Texas, he has put a lot of work in this weekend to figuring it out. Qualifying didn't go the way he wanted it to. Felt like, you know, it's got a little bit more drag than they need, but that kind of vehicle race is good here when you have the downforce you have. Absolutely, you know, it's kind of funny to hear they he doesn't have a mile and a half win because let's look at the statistics for just a second. The last 10 miles and a half races he's outscored points everybody he's the highest point scorer there was <laughs> fantastic right and in those races he's also uh, been up front every time leading laps doing what they do they just haven't got to finish it off <laughs> It, there's no reason this kid can't go out here tonight and win his he race. He does have two second place finishes on mile and a half, so there he's come he close. So, he's come yeah. close several times. He definitely could get it done, no doubt about it. So, Corey doing double duty along with a few other drivers this weekend racing in the Xfinity Series, which brings me to the schedule for tomorrow. Race day for the Xfinity Series, 12.30 p.m. Eastern with the race coverage to follow. Then on Sunday, it is the Cup Series turn out at Texas Motor Speedway. Race day begins at 2 p.m. Eastern on FS1 with the race coverage to follow. Meanwhile, though, tonight, here is a look at the front row. Christian Eckes makes his fourth front row start in the last five races, but leading the field to green is Nick Sanchez, his number two truck on the pole for the second straight year here in Texas. And coming up in just a bit, Josh Sims will check in with Nick out there on the grid. Also, still to come here on race day, we head out to Texas and hear from Ty Majeski, who's been strong at Texas in the past. Plus, Stuart Friesen is looking to rekindle a little Texas magic and find victory lane once again. Josh is with him next at the track. And Christian Eckes is our most recent race winner, so we took him to a brewery to celebrate and catch up on the year. That is all on the way next. Welcome back to Race Day from Texas Motor Speedway with a look at Matt Crafton and the 88 truck two-time winner out in Texas with 43 Texas starts. So he is certainly no stranger to this racetrack. Now let's take a look at the Thor Sports starting positions for tonight. Five drivers at that team. Here's where they start. All sandwiched between 11th and 22nd. 22nd for Matt Crafton. 11th for Ty Majeski, best of the group. And speaking of Ty Majeski, we are so excited to welcome him in to the race day show. Joining us from Texas, great to see you as always. And uh, we've been talking, Ty, throughout the course of the show about how treacherous Texas Motor Speedway can be, but you've had some good finishes here. Do you feel like you have this place somewhat figured out? You know, you think you do, and then uh, you show <laughs> up here for practice today, and uh, I think we're a little bit off, honestly. So uh, I think we made some good adjustments here in between um, practice qualifying in the race uh, to try and get what we need. Uh, last year's race was during the day. Um, that obviously throws uh, a little bit of a curveball into things. So I uh, just have to hit the balance right. Uh, as the sun goes down, obviously this place picks up grip and uh, gets incredibly fast. So uh, excited to get going tonight. Uh, should be a great one under the lights. So Ty, the last two seasons you've started off really strong lots of top fives and you carried all that momentum and all that goes good runs through the regular season didn't get your first run until you were in the playoffs this year you've kind of started the same way really strong great runs how can you and joe get your win before you get to the playoffs to lock yourselves in well that's a huge part right uh, is is accumulating playoff points. Uh, we, we feel pretty good about our points position and, and making the playoffs, um, but you want to have that buffer, right? We we talk about that second round of the playoffs a lot, and uh, you have Talladega, and that's a big wild card. So um, things are a lot of things are out of your control there, so it's huge to build up um, a buffer and 
having a buffer is playoff points, and that comes from winning races. So uh, incredibly important to, to get this win knocked off here sooner rather than later. Um, it's easy to say, right? We just need to do the little things. It's We're close. The speed is there. And uh, a lot of times, that's the hard part. So when, when you don't have the speed, it's hard to find it. We have that. We just have to execute on all levels. Well, drivers like to think we know a lot, Ty. And last <laughs> week, I was nervous for your Monday meeting because you made it known that you helped on the setup for that truck at Martinsville. But you finished second. So was Joe high-fiving you, or, or did he come up with the setup this week, and that's why you're struggling a little bit? <laughs> uh, you know, I, that's, uh, that's funny. No, honestly, it's... You know, Joe and I work well together. Um, I, I feel like, you know, he always has, obviously, has the final say. He's the crew chief. Um, but I, I think I challenge him a little bit to step outside of his comfort zone. And uh, But at times, I need to rein him in, and at times, he needs to rein me in. So I think, you know, us working together, uh, me being, you know, sort of the uh, acting engineer for now is is good. Uh, I know what goes into the truck. Obviously, he does, and we go back and forth and, and come up with good packages to come to back to all these places uh, for the third time now together. So we're building up a good notebook and uh, having a ton of fun going racing with Joe Shear. Um, we uh, we talk a lot, just about every single day, whether I'm at the shop or not. Uh, we have a great relationship and uh, excited to keep that going here tonight. That relationship is incredible. I mean, you can see it when you guys are around each other. Do you think that's what allowed you to kind of be the leader at Thor Sport because you're there so much, you're interacting with your guys? I mean, we definitely see you as the guy in that organization right now. Yeah, you know, I, I might argue with you a little bit, right? I, I think we've been, we've been running well, uh, but we haven't been able to close out that championship at the end of the year. I mean, Matt has two of them, Ben has two of them, uh, two of the last three, so... Um, you know, we just need to execute and into the playoffs when it counts. So, um, but listen, I, I love going to the racetrack. I love what I'm doing with Thor Sport. Um, can't thank Duke and Rhonda enough for this opportunity. I just really, truly from the bottom of my heart, love what I'm doing, uh, going to the racetrack week in and week out and uh, going to battle with these, uh, with these 98 guys. Speaking of the racetrack, Texas known for great food, like great barbecue and things like that. Any good pre-race meal on tap? You mentioned we're racing in the lights. You need to get some dinner in the system, right? What do you got? Yeah, honestly, uh, I just figured out I like bananas for the first time in my life. <laughs> I, I, I always thought I hated bananas. Last week, I tried a banana for the first time in like 15 wow. years, and I loved it. So had a couple bananas and uh, a little bit of barbecue. So yeah, you got to have barbecue that when you're in uh, when you're in Texas. So excited to get going tonight. Should be great. We didn't well, see that one coming. I did nice, not see nice that. Combination. Good for you going back to bananas. That's impressive. <laughs> it's been 15 years. Hey, thanks so much for your time. We're wishing you all the best of luck out there in Texas. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> that is, uh, you learn something new on this show every day. Okay, we want to take a look now at the leaderboard and dial up Ty's teammate, Ben Rhodes, who is currently holding down the 10th spot, plus six to the good. Here's his last three finishes, 16th at Bristol, best of seventh at Austin, and 14th last time out at Martinsville. So, Ben won late last year. We've seen this a little bit in the past with him, but I'm sure you'd prefer to get it early on. What do you think's going on there with that team? Man, I don't know. It's It's been a rough season, to say the least, for Ben. Um, one top 10, you know, and an average finish of 18th. It's hard to believe that he's 10th in points with an average finish of 18th. But I'm not worried about him. They've got experience. He's got a great crew chief. They'll get along, and they'll get it fine. I, will they get that win before the playoffs? Well, we'll see. He's not hitting the panic button. <laughs> I might Don't be. Panic. Honestly, I might be hitting the panic button. And right here, you know that drivers like to talk with their yeah. hands, Todd. And right here, he's it's, telling, hey, it won't turn, it won't turn. Okay, it's snapping loose. I don't know what he's telling him, but, you know, he's trying to read those hands and just body language. I mean, these Very guys are You can see it right there. The body language is not good with Ben. But Texas is one of those places that will drive you crazy because it's so hard to get a vehicle to drive just right. Um, but Ben Rhodes, you talked about his experience. That's the only reason I'm not hitting the panic button right now because – he has shown time and time again, if he can make it to the championship four, he can win a championship. But this team right now does not have the speed, at least to this point, to go out and lead laps, get stage points, win races. And that's what they're going to have to build as they get later into the season. Yeah, you're not hitting the panic button because of Ben. He's a champion. And I'm, not hitting, said. I'm not hitting it because of Rich Lucius. I know Rich, and he's going to get it figured out. We'll have to keep an eye on Ben Rhodes as he tries to get a win out there tonight in Texas. Still to come here on race day, Stuart Friesen is looking to rekindle some Texas magic and find victory lane for the first time this year. We hear from him at the track next. Plus, we look at the Titans of Texas. Can someone take on Todd's record at the track? We will discuss that coming up Todd next. Sure hopes not. <laughs> 
Welcome back to race day from Texas Motor Speedway with a look at Raja Karuth's truck. He was the 2024 Las Vegas winner. First career win for him. Of course, that came the last time we were on a mile and a half racetrack. But Texas is different from Vegas with its own unique set of challenges. So what do all the drivers think of the mile and a half track they will have to take on for tonight? We asked them for race day. Guys, we're back in Texas. Hey, we just have a good night tonight. Keep this momentum rolling. Maximize our day here. We're in for a real thrill today. Texas is tough. It has two different corners that are completely different. Bringing a, a vehicle that's that's good at both ends is, is usually a challenge. I mean, both corners are different, so really, you have to limit yourself. we got to spin already. You know, it's a big, fast mile and a half. Turns one and two are so much different than three and four. Three and four is, is pretty hammered down. It's high banked. In a truck, we, we should be wide open through there, or if we happen to have a, a warm day there, then, then you're lifting, you're, you're saving your truck. It's very technical. As, as far as you know your break point and then it's the complete opposite you're slowing down a ton to get through turns one and two turns one and two is in my opinion one of the trickier parts of the schedule sometimes i find myself forgetting that and getting too far out there or pushing the limits of grip off of two and missing the groove you never can have a vehicle that's going to handle perfect in one or two so you kind of figure out which one corner you want to be best at get down to turn one things flat now you can get in trouble down there in a hurry when you are passing you, you kind of need to get it done in a hurry over there you really have to drive the truck and, and you know move it around it's definitely one of my favorite on the schedule that is the motto no limits at texas it's already been treacherous right for some <laughs> it's, we been heard a, it. it's been a busy day out there in texas for these truck series it has Thanks. right off the bat on lap one today caitlin these guys were already pushing the limits as you said there's no limit well they found the limit actually yeah. <laughs> uh, the tanner gray in practice went out and in turn two he gets up just a little bit out of the groove gets loose smacks the wall and then a few laps later well right here it is there's there's tanner gray right there you see it does not take much todd that thing snaps on him right after that we had tyler anchorman out on the racetrack just three laps later and he gets tight does the same exact thing right here he's p1 in practice by the way yep. then goes out pushes a little bit more smacks the wall you're like well, hey why would you do that you're p1 why would you go any harder well that's what makes speed here it's that razor's edge of being a little bit wider you heard nick sanchez that's say it. that until it bites you you know everything feels <laughs> great until it doesn't in texas <laughs> yeah. that's a good way to phrase it and what makes texas really hard is it's so fast it's aero dependent we know how these trucks are with aerodynamics and if you lose the side force on one of these trucks, getting underneath somebody, and we see uh, Matt Crafton, we're gonna have a little clip here, Matt Crafton in, in traffic just loses the side force on it and spins out and causes a big wreck. That's one of the toughest parts about Texas because it's so fast. And the restarts, restarts are crazy. You go down in turn one, and you the guys on the outside, they're up against the, the, the slick part. Then the guys that are inside have the guys on the outside on them. So everybody's slipping yeah, and sliding. Nobody you, wants you, to go to that second group, you, so you they're going to be on you tight. Yep. Drivers definitely have their hands full as it pertains to this racetrack. But I do want to go back to May 2022, a couple years ago, out at Texas Motor Speedway when Stuart Friesen, he led 60 laps on the way to the win. He hasn't been back to victory lane since that moment, but... Big, big moment for Stuart Friesen and company. Such a cool victory lane as well, I might add. So, to find out his mindset for tonight and if he believes he can get potentially another win in Texas, we join Josh, who is standing by out at the track with Stuart. Well, thanks, Caitlin. And yeah, this is a really good track for you, Stuart. Five top tens here. You've got a win here and you qualified third. So, it feels like good timing to be coming to Texas. Yeah, absolutely. The way our season's kind of got off, uh, you know, on the wrong foot, it feels good to get back to a familiar place, uh, a track that's one of my favorite on the schedule. It's um, not everybody's favorite, but oddly enough, it's, it's one of mine. So uh, we've had some success here, success here and um, we got a fast Chili's TRD Pro here tonight again. For you, Stuart, what's this season been like? Because we've talked a number of times off camera about what it's like to build everything up and, and the challenges you go through. So where do you feel like you guys are in that process? We're still in the building stage, uh, bringing Jimmy Villeneuve on to crew chief this year, you know, just just a, a whole different outlook than, than I've had in the last, you know, four years since we started, you know, HFR pretty much in 2020. So uh, it's, it's great to have him on board and, you know, just a lot of updating parts and pieces in the shop. You know, we're really uh, hunkered down on building our own chassis from from the ground up. So this is this is one of them. This is our, our, our latest uh, truck. And. We're proud of that. Thanks to all the guys, you know, in the fab shop that have been busting their butts all year. And it's it's been tough. You know, we've 
like to have been able to say we've had some top tens this year, but but you know we've had some speed, and then the, then the the finishes get away from us. So hopefully we can um, you know come to our, a familiar track, one of my favorites, and, and get the ball rolling. I gotta say you're bringing the heat in that chili suit, buddy. That's right. We got the uh, we got all the chilies folks here, uh, the live studio audience, and uh, it looks good. We got the chilies menu truck. Check it out, and uh, you know if you're you're watching at chilies, props to you. And if not, go get some takeout before the race starts. There you go, Caitlin. <laughs> Josh Sims bringing the heat with the jokes. I love it. So we heard Stuart talking about some of the hardships this team has faced so far this year. How would you assess the season they're having? Yeah, it's been a tough season for them for sure. But right now, Stuart Friesen's looking at tonight and saying, hey, we built this truck in house. This is an alliance program where we bought this thing and worked on it a little bit. We built this thing and we qualified in the top three. But what I'm starting to find is that Stuart is comfortable being uncomfortable. His yeah. best <laughs> tracks, you think about it, Texas, Darlington, Homestead, those are places a lot of drivers yes are intimidated by. Stewart embraces those, and when his confidence is high, just like it is today, coming to a track he's finished first and third at the last couple of years, been 21 and 22, uh, he's coming here with a lot of confidence, and it shows in qualifying being P3. Yeah. Great points for sure. So he's had his struggles. So too has Lane Riggs. What do you think about what we've seen out of him so far? Yeah, you, know, you know, Lane, last year he ran three races in the truck series, seventh at IRP, really good in the other two. And he's saying to himself, I can do this if I just get the chance in a good team. Well, guess what? <laughs> Their 38 truck calls him, gives him that opportunity, turns the heads, and it's been disaster ever since. But the good news is it really has not been anything that the team has done, anything that Lane has done. This is a good race team that's won races. Give them a chance to get in here. You know, last week, Martinsville. Three times he got spun out, had nothing to do with it. <laughs> That's came, a long day. Still came back to finish 15th. Well, another great run. So just give him a chance. They're going to be fine. Maybe they can get that ship oh. righted tonight out yeah. in Texas. Okay, we got more race day on the way. We'll discuss this guy, Kyle Busch. No stranger to victory lane out in Texas. Five-time winner there. And Christian Eckes, you guys. We were able to catch up with him earlier in the week at a brewery for a little casual conversation and some beer making. That story you don't want to <laughs> Mess. You didn't we'll mess right it up, back. did you? <laughs> no. Welcome back to Texas, getting ready for this speedycash.com 250 victory lane. We're going to give our picks later on in the show. What about Tanner Gray? He is starting in the back because of an incident in practice earlier today. He's eating a banana. He must have gotten that tip <laughs> from Ty Majewski. He's starting 33rd. But what about Zane Smith? He is in the field. A nine-time winner, a past champion in the series. All smiles right now. He is starting 12th for the race tonight. But I want to go to last year at Texas, an incident he was involved in with, along with Nick Sanchez dominated the race, leading all but the final four laps until this happened. So certainly not the way Nick would have wanted this race to unfold for him uh, at that point. So to hear his mindset for tonight, he might be feeling a little redemption perhaps out there in Texas. We're gonna join Josh who is standing by with Nick Sanchez. Well, Caitlin, and redemption is the key word, and you've watched it back. So dominant here last year. Well, you come out and win the poll again. So what did you learn last year that can help you the second time around? Uh, honestly, besides not wrecking, uh, just learning where the track's going to go and what, what I need to do with my truck's balance. So last year I went, I would say, I tuned myself out, and this year I feel like I know what to do now, and uh, just got to set myself up for the end, Lab 168. You get another chance, obviously, at Texas to get that win. Now you've got a win under your belt. How do you feel like you've grown as a driver since this time last year? Uh, I mean, night and day difference, right? Last year was my fifth truck race. I, I really didn't know what I was doing. I was just kind of merely driving. And now, you know, I, I've definitely, you know, kind of honed a little bit more into it and worked on myself a little bit. And obviously, I've gotten my first win since then. So biggest thing is I know, to, know how to win now, and now I just got to do it twice. And Nick's on the pole tonight, Caitlin. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, so far so good for Nick Sanchez and company with that P1 starting spot. We heard him saying he feels like he's grown and changed as a competitor since this race a year ago. What do you expect to see out of him? Yeah, Nick did not know what he didn't know until this <laughs> yeah. race last year, until you get yourself in trouble. And uh, Nick has just been so impressive this year. You know, he has that win, has another top five this year. Uh, but this wreck last year was huge for Nick Sanchez. Leads 160 out of, 168 of 172 laps, dominates, probably can see that checker flag can taste it and then he loses it right at the end and that just makes you you know as a driver just go back 
think about things, work on it. But I would say all drivers have a race that maybe define their career. And this one might be the one that put Nick Sanchez on the map for most people. They saw him go out there and dominate and they said, this kid can get, can get it done. And uh, now he's got that win under his belt. So tonight he's starting on the pole again. He wants to go repeat what he didn't finish off last year. You know, I think that uh, everything Nick, I totally agree with what he said and, and where he's come from and how much he's grown because last year, he started off, we saw like three or four really good races as a rookie, right? Like you said, he didn't know what he didn't know, so he was kind of taking it easy and they were good races. Then he got a little overzealous and he had four really bad races in a row. Danny Stockman, his crew chief at the time, pulled the reins back and said, look, you got to slow down to go fast, and he did. Well, this year he's had the same start of the year, but he's figured it out a lot quicker. Last week at Martinsville, he didn't have the best truck, but still got a fourth place finish. So you can see his maturity that he's gained over the year. We'll have to keep an eye out for Nick Sanchez, see if he can't get that elusive Texas win this time around. Some past winners who are in the field tonight. There are quite a few of them, five total. Kyle Busch and Johnny Sauter both have five wins apiece. Matt Crafton's won there twice. Ty Dillon and Stuart Friesen, one way we win apiece for them. And speaking though of Ty Dillon, his wife, gave birth to their third child, Bear Dakota Dillon, born yesterday. A great moment, of course, for the family. Very lovely photos of the family. Now, family of five. and big Literally week. a baby bear. <laughs> baby bear. Big, <laughs> big week for them. Uh, so Ty Dillon wants to just continue this awesome week. He is starting 24th, hoping to potentially get another Texas win for him. So, too, is this guy, Kyle Busch. Never count out Kyle Busch when he is in a truck because he has done done so well in this series over the years. He is starting fourth to try and get another Texas win. And another guy that we have to keep an eye on is Johnny Sauter, starting 18th. Our boy Johnny Sauter back in the field He's this back. weekend. I love it. He's a veteran, certainly no stranger to Texas and no stranger to Victory Lane out in Fort Worth. But that brings me to the top of the all-time win list. Who is P1 on that list? It is our very own Todd Bodine. It's not Kyle Busch. That's it. <laughs> yeah, a <laughs> six-time winner holds the record, but someone could potentially tie you tonight. Not break it, just tie. Yeah, you know, rec records are meant to be tied and broken, and it's, you know, it's going to happen eventually, but yeah, we, uh, uh, we had a good run out of Texas, Jermaine <laughs> racing, six races winning, and uh, we did it in all different kinds of fashions, but the best part about the whole thing is we always had fun doing it. Yeah. Going to Texas was always fun for the team, and we had a good time. Yeah, he was an expert out at Texas. Uh, speaking of experts, what do the voices in the booth think about this record? I <laughs> the real say, experts say now. hello to Jamie Little, Phil Parsons, and Michael Waltrip. What do you guys think? Is, is the record tied tonight for, for Todd? What do we think? Well, first off, what a record for Todd Bodine. Hats off to you and your amazing career, especially here at Texas. So it's a great question. Can Johnny Sauter or Kyle Busch, Mikey, <laughs> tie him tonight? Do you think it happens? I got some good news for Todd Lee, the onion. Kyle Busch seems mere mortal here lately. He hasn't been winning every time he cranks his engine. So, man, I think our truckers, our young truckers, have the, have him squared away and can put him in his place. It's been fun to see, like Christian Eka stepping up at Bristol, bumper to bumper takes the win with Kyle Busch. So, uh, Todd, I think you're going to be okay. I think one of our regulars wins tonight. What do you think, Phil? Well, I mean, I, we talk about the young drivers and how good they are. I want to talk about a guy that maybe isn't so young. It's Stuart Friesen. He won here a couple years ago. And he's got a great qualifying effort tonight. And, and his truck looks great, too. It's I just got peppers I, on it. I just want to order when I see his truck. <laughs> I just want to order something when I see his truck. But Stewart needs to turn his season around. 14th is his best finish this year. And he can do it right here because he's done it before. That beautiful truck makes me hungry, indeed. Hey, what about Raja Karuth, though? He beat Kyle straight up at Las Vegas, came through the field and uh, did a great job. But tonight, he's starting in the back for an unapproved adjustment. He was fastest in practice. We'll certainly be watching that. 250 miles of Truck Series action coming at you at the bottom of the hour. Caitlin? Thank you, Jamie. Great insight there from the three of you. We look forward to hearing you on the call. Now, here is a look at the front end of the starting grid tonight. Row one sees Nick Sanchez on the pole for the first time this season. He's the sixth driver to win a pole this year. Sharing the front row is Christian Eckes, who makes his fourth front row start in the last five races. Row two, we heard them talking about him. Stuart Friesen rolls off in third, his best starting position of the year. Kyle Busch lines up in fourth. And here's a Kyle Nugget. He's won from that fourth start position in his last two Texas races.
races he has <laughs> run. So that was in 2019 and 2020. Row three, Grant Enfinger, another driver with his best qualifying result of the season. And Daniel Dye, he rounds out the top six with his best ever Fort Worth starting position. Still to come here on race day, Christian Ackes is our most recent winner. So we took him to a brewery to celebrate and catch up on the season he has had. Plus, Chase Purdy is starting to gain some momentum as of late. He will join us from the racetrack. All that is coming up next. Corey Seager leads the Rangers against Jose Altuve and the Astros. Saturday at 4 Eastern on FS1. Welcome back to race day from Texas Motor Speedway with a look at Taylor Gray been so strong throughout the course of the season three top fives on the year he will start ninth for the race momentarily. What about Tyler Ankrum he's also been impressive so far this season runner up in Vegas top five last week on the short track but he is starting in the rear tonight after going to a backup truck Tyler hitting the wall early in practice today. And a driver who is starting to pick up some momentum was second here last year and had a solid run at Martinsville, and that would be Chase Purdy. Right now, Purdy is with Josh out at the racetrack. Well, yeah, Caitlin, and a great time to be talking to Chase Purdy. Coming up, your best finish of the season at Martinsville, coming to a place where you finished runner-up last, last year, that is. So I'd imagine a lot of confidence heading into tonight. Yeah, for sure. Um, this has uh, been a good place for me. I love this racetrack, and uh, when you can have a – a good solid finish like we had at Martinsville to come into this weekend. It, it's always uh, a lot of momentum and uh, just more upbeat in general to be at the racetrack. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Key word for the 77 team, momentum right now, Caitlin. Yeah, thank you, Josh. We'll have to see if the momentum can continue for Chase. And speaking of momentum, Christian Eckes, he has a lot of it. He's the only driver with multiple wins on the year after the Martinsville victory. And there's no better place to take a winning driver than a brewery. So I sat down with Christian at Cabarrus Brewing to talk racing and beer making. You're going to show us how to pour one of these, huh? Man, I thought I was going to be better than that. <laughs> oh, no. All right, so that was cool. Who knew how much goes into making beer? You didn't yeah. even know what hops was before I mean, today. honestly, I just like drinking it. How was the celebrations after the win? For Martinsville? Yeah. Eckes gets it done. Hell, yeah. Uh, well, there was none. There was none? <laughs> yeah, How it's, disappointing. It's Texas week already, you know? We, we got to get right back to work. What a big win, though, right? And you guys dominated yeah. that race. And Bristol, you won at earlier this season. Was that, like, extra redemption for you after what happened in the playoffs at Bristol a year ago? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's That was the one that I had circled throughout the entire year. Christian Eckes has lost the top spot with five to go. I feel like every driver, obviously, wants to get those wins at Bristol and Martinsville. It just shows how far. Uh, I feel like I've come and our team has come. In Martinsville, we weren't that good at last year, and we come and bring a dominant truck. Bristol, we lost the race, kind of on my end, uh, with, I don't know, six to go or something like that. So to come back and, and fight Kyle Busch for a win like that was definitely rewarding for us. Eckes delivers at Bristol. Boy, did he earn it tonight. So you're the first one to have multi-wins this year of our Truck Series regulars. That's got to be nice. It's nice to check just the win box in general, <laughs> but to get two this early in the season, and not only this year, I think we've won like four of the last 11. So it just kind of shows how strong we can be whenever we're on, but it's good to get those two wins for sure. Uh, 19 is the class of the field. When you look at your team right now, is there one area you've identified like, okay, we need to improve X? I think our mile and a half program is a little bit weaker than it needs to be right now. Okay. I feel comfortable with everything else. Speaking of mile and a half, that's where we're going now to yeah. Texas Motor Speedway. Expectations going out to old Fort Worth. Uh, I mean, I finished <laughs> second there twice. I know. <laughs> I ran second there last year. I was running third when I got wrecked in 2020. So hopefully we get one spot better than my best finish there. But I like Texas a lot, so it should be fun. There you have it. Uh, good times out at the brewery there with Christian Eckes. Um, he has been good at Texas and so far so good starting on the front row. That's a plus. Yeah, these trucks have had incredible speed in qualifying, especially at the bigger tracks, you know, the super speedways a mile and a half. Uh, but what stands out to me is just a turnaround in Christian Eckes' career, right? 22, he doesn't know what he's doing, finishes eighth in the championship. Bill McAnally says, hey, I want to rebuild my organization uh, to be a winning team. We've done it in ARCA, now we want to do it in trucks. He goes and hires Christian Eckes. And last year, they were probably 
probably a favorite until the round of eight when they got knocked out and did not make it the, ch the championship race at Phoenix in the in the playoffs. Still, they won that race and they feel like they should have been champions. So what a turnaround for him this last season has brought him and now into this season. They're still carrying that momentum. Two wins, obviously a front runner in that championship again. Yeah, you know, and you talk about the turnaround and you hear Christian say he's kind of proud of where he's come, right? How much he's grown in a year. And I totally agree. You know, we watched Christian come into the series in the sport and really fast all the time, but made some mistakes. And we see that with all the young kids coming in. But he's figured out how to not make those mistakes. His racecraft has gotten polished. And that's what we see week in and week out now. now you know, it, not overdriving the truck, taking what it gives you, not putting it in bad positions. To me, that just tells you how much this kid has grown and why they're having a lot of the success they're having. Yeah, Christian Eckes definitely has become a top contender in the truck series the last two years. Now, we heard Jamie Little talking about it. Some trucks are headed to the rear. Here, take a look at this, guys. Here's the list. Tanner Gray, Tyler Ankrum, Brett Holmes, Raja Carruth, all of those guys going to the back for unapproved adjustments, which will make this very interesting. Unapproved adjustment. It was a whole truck race. for two of those. <laughs> Exactly. We'll have to keep an eye on those teams as they try to make their way to the front. But tomorrow, guys, on FS1, a bitter, bitter rivalry is brewing in the Lone Star State. Now, Corey Seager and the reigning champion Rangers battle Jose Altuve and the Astros. It all begins at 4 Eastern on FS1. You don't want to miss it. We got more race day, guys, coming after this. We'll give our race picks. You see pit crews and guys out there getting situated on pit road. A little over 15 minutes to the command. Pit boxes are going up. We will have our picks and more race day coming up after this. Make sure you stay with us right here on FS1. Unbelievable! Have you ever seen anything like that? Do we have your attention yet? Is this the new face of the great American race? Is this how you dance on the razor's edge? How you find a diamond in the desert? How you beat the heat? Will this gladiator be the last one standing? Who's gonna attack from the rest of the pack? Let's do it. Last question, are you not entertained? The Craftsman Truck Series back in Texas. These drivers, they get with it every lap of the race. <laughs> this is gonna be crazy. We're in for a real thrill today. Bit of trading paint back there. Caution on the racetrack. Oh, what a big hit. Everything is bigger in Texas. Today will be no exception. There's Corey Heim. He's been so strong this year, Todd. Strong this year, but is it time for Corey Heim <laughs> to get his first mile and a half win? Ooh. All right, Dr. Seuss. Yeah, good time. <laughs> heim time, well, Heim time. What about Grant Enfinger? He is starting fifth for the race tonight. You think he can get it done? Well, he did have a top 10 earlier this year at the mile and a half that we already ran at Las Vegas. Starts fifth tonight. That's an improvement. I think he's going to be one to watch. Another one to watch certainly will be that guy, Stuart Friesen. We heard from him earlier on the show. He's starting third. Yeah, this has got to be his favorite racetrack. His last win in the truck series came right here. I'm sure all those feelings came right back as soon as he walked into the track. And we already know he's hot is what Josh Sims said with yep. that fire suit on. He's hot. So too is Nick Sanchez, the pole sitter. What do we think? Pole well, two years in a row, came so close to getting that victory last year. Got to lead a couple more laps this year. We'll have to see how he does. It is time now for our SpeedyCash.com 250 Victory Lane picks. And Trevor, I mentioned it earlier. You picked correct last week. And last, with Christian by the way. Eckes, so you get to go first. Perfect. Well, if I'm going first, and you said earlier, Kyle Busch won twice from starting fourth place here in Texas. He's starting fourth again tonight. I mean, how do I not take Kyle Busch? Uh, so once again. <laughs> I'm going with that seven truck. I think all the stars are aligning. Oh, it's a great pick. You can't. You ever, can't. Yeah, a little fruit. You got to take it. Yeah, but I, I'm going to tell you, I think that Taylor Gray has done such a magnificent job this year. I think that he gets his first win tonight. Love that. Nice. Okay, very good. I'm going with the guy we just saw, the pole sitter. Nick Sanchez gets his second win of the year tonight. So there you have yeah, it. We'll find out. Three picks. We'll have to see who gets correct tonight. <laughs> Three very solid picks. I hope I get to send you all yeah. a win text here in We're a little while. We're getting closer and closer to racing out there at Texas. So time now to go trackside for pre-race ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as you are able and remove your hats and veterans render a hand salute as the first Cavalry Division Honor Guard presents our nation's colors. 
Here to offer tonight's invocation, please welcome from Texas Alliance Raceway Ministries, Brett Schistler. Would you please pray with me? Most loving and gracious God, we come to you this beautiful evening and we thank you. We thank you for the men and women all over the world that help to keep us free that we can be here tonight. Lord, we think about all of the things going on in our world and we ask your guidance, your safety, and your protection for our world. But as we come closer tonight, we ask for your safety for the drivers, the crews, the safety workers, and all of the people that have worked so hard to put this evening together. Lord, we finally come to you and we humble ourselves before you and ask for your guidance, your love, your peace, and your direction until it is our turn to come home to you. It is in the strong and beautiful name of your son, Jesus Christ, we are here tonight. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome from Sardis, Arkansas, Paige Johnsy. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so precious At the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Beautiful anthem, beautiful night for racing as well. It is sure to be exciting out there at Texas Motor Speedway for Trevor, Todd, myself. That does it for us here on this edition of Race Day. Time now to say hello to the voices in the booth and check in with Jamie Little. Thank you so much, Caitlin, and we welcome you to Texas Motor Speedway on this beautiful evening as we get race ready to go racing under the lights. This is the SpeedyCash.com 250. Well, 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 would you look here? The truck series has moseyed their way down to Texas. After some short track racing last week, they'll be ready for some good old fashioned mile and a half racing. Expectations are out the window, because around here, there's no limits. A lot can happen in 250 miles. Who'll be victorious in the Lone Star State? Guess we'll just have to wait and find out. It's certainly one of the fastest intermediate racetracks we go to all year. And in the words of the drivers from earlier today, it's one of the most treacherous. So that gives us plenty of storylines this evening. And we welcome you inside. I'm Jamie Little. He's Phil Parsons and Michael Waltrip. We're excited for what's to come. But, Michael, one of the big storylines, Kyle Busch is back in the field, winning as driver in the series, a five-time winner here. Is this his race to lose? Yes, but how did he beat Kyle Busch? He's been such an amazing truck racer, NASCAR Hall.
Hall of Famer. He's done it all. But Phil, lately he's looked like a mortal. In the last 14 races, four wins. That's pretty good, right? Yeah, really good. It is. But in the previous 14, prior to that, 10 wins. So these truckers, what happened to him? Corey, Nick, Raja, they, they're what happened to him. Young truck racers that have his number. They've been able to turn him away. Eckes at Bristol, bumper to bumper, he takes Kyle Busch down. So while he is the favorite for this race tonight, and by the way, he's won the last three in a row here, I'm going to say he doesn't get it done again tonight. What do you think, Bill? Well, I'm going to I'm going to take a look at Eckes. You mentioned Christian Eckes turning him away at Bristol. As a matter of fact, Christian Eckes has won two of our last three races, and he was in that scrum here last year battling for the win when they had that big wreck on the last lap. So he's a young driver that you're going to have to keep an eye on. So good on the mile and a half as well. But the guy I really want to talk about is Corey Heim, the driver of that number 11 Toyota. We're going to compare him to one of the best we've ever had in the truck series, Christopher Bell. We know what he's been able to do since the truck series. 17 Xfinity wins, seven cup wins. He made the championship for the last two years in the cup series. But look how close these numbers are. You see Corey Heim has a bit of an edge in, in, one, in one year, but one less win. But that's, that's the type of, I think, career that Corey Heim is headed for. Something like Christopher Bell. All the talk in the garage area is Corey Heim is a can't-miss cup champion. What a comparison there. I think that that's caught a awesome. lot of people's attention right there. We know Corey's been great, but when you really compare him to Christopher Bell, it's quite impressive. Well, we have two pit reporters covering all the action tonight, Josh Sims and Amanda Busick. Good evening, Amanda. Hey, Jamie, and yeah, tying his best start of the season. Stuart Friesen will kick off his night from the second row, a much-needed jolt for the driver that's been facing frustrations of late. But if there's ever a place for a turnaround, Texas just might be it. This is the site of Stuart's last career win back in 2022. When I asked him what the secret was to this place, he said, patience, let the track come to you. And Josh, I bet there's a lot of drivers tonight that the patience will be tested. Well, Amanda, this race was an absolute heartbreaker for Nick Sanchez in the two team last year. He dominated this race, won the pole, swept the stages, led 98% of the laps, but wrecked towards the end of the race, fighting for the win and had to settle for 16th place. When I talked to him earlier, he said, yes, it was tough to watch that back, but it's important for re people to realize that was just my fifth truck series race. I've learned a ton since this point last year. I know what I need here. And most importantly, I know not what not to do that is in that situation once again. Well, it's setting up for redemption for Nick Sanchez. He's won the poll. Now let's see if he can chase down the one that got away. That was certainly one that got away, and he didn't have to wait too long to get that first win. You see that checkered flag on the passenger side door. That means he is a race winner. Got it done at Daytona. As we take a look at the playoff leaderboard, see those names in yellow? Those are the boys who are locked in. They already four drivers. If we have a new winner here tonight, then half of our playoff drivers will already be locked in. There's a lot of people below that playoff cutoff line. That can win. That'll really mix things up. Perhaps we'll mix it up tonight. Well, for the seventh time this season, let's go trackside to fire those engines. And now, Rays fans, here to say the most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome Speedy Cash President Bill Baker. I have been waiting to say this all day. Drivers, start your engines. <laughs> from the Lone Star State. There's rodeo, there's barbecue. Tonight, it's all about Texas Motor Speedway. We're just minutes away from dropping the green flag. Welcome back to Texas Motor Speedway. How about that flag? It's always windy here. That'll come into play, I think, in just a little while as the sun sets and the lights come on. Absolutely beautiful tonight. Well, Taylor Gray is another driver we'll be talking about quite a bit. What a season it has been for this young man since flipping at Daytona top 10 every race. Yeah, made his uh, debut in the Xfinity Series at Richmond a couple of races ago, had a top five finish there, and he qualified third for the Xfinity race tomorrow. Things are going the right way for Taylor Gray. They certainly are, Phil. Let's look at this track that he's going to tackle tonight with our Craftsman track description. You can see a mile and a half in length 
different bankings in one and two and three and four. That just makes everything more crazy when they go racing side by side. Many grooves here. You will see trucks right up next to that outside wall doing battle. So uh, a fun racetrack, fast and as we've covered, treacherous. <laughs> Let's take a look at our race analysis. You see this race is 167 laps, 250 miles. Our stages are 40-40. And the final stage, a fairly long 87 laps. You see our pit window is somewhere between 50 and 55 laps. That means we will have pit stops in that final stage. And Carson Hosebar got his first career win here last year. All right, let's take a look at the speedycash.com starting lineup. Nick Sanchez, his second career start at Texas, second career pole right here as well. Next to him, Christian Eck is starting right where he started a week ago, and we know where that ended up in victory lane. Got Kyle Busch there back in row number two. We know how strong he's going to be, and Stuart Friesen having a great night so far. Grant Enfinger, Daniel Dye, great runs. There you see Lane Riggs. He's going to roll off the side. Bailey Curry, great qualifying effort by Bailey. Here's Taylor Gray back in row number five with Raja Karuth. But well, that's where he qualified, but unfortunately, going to have to go to the rear because of a flat tire. Had a flat, huh? He did. Let's talk to him about that. You want to? Yeah, Phil? let's ask him. Raja Karuth, it's Waltrip and the Fox team. Do you copy in your Hendrick.com truck? That is HendrickCars.com. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. How are y'all doing tonight? We're happy, and I know you qualified well. You're going to be fast in the race, but unfortunately, you got to drop to the rear. How does that change your strategy, and, and how do you feel about fighting your way through this tough field? Yeah, man, I'm just going to just try to stay cool and, and collected and calm as we go through it. such a long race. we got 21 laps, and we're used to having that at our mile and a half races. So, uh, man, I'm just super confident in my Spire Motorsports Chevy, and thanks to my 71 group and Mr. H back home. Hope you're feeling better, and hopefully we can get one number two tonight. Well, I talked to Mr. H after that first win. He's so proud of you. So uh, do him proud again tonight, buddy. Have a good one. Yes, sir. One step, one punch, one right at a time. <laughs> Love his attitude. I do, too. Very we were, confident. We were working together this morning with some craftsman content, and he just has that attitude that you heard there on the radio when he's walking around. He's just really a fun guy, very appreciative and thankful for this opportunity, and a great cat and a great race car driver to watch behind the wheel. He's got a little pep in his step here, too. This is <laughs> another mile and a half, and he won Las Vegas. Can't wait to see what Raja Karuth can do. Well, let's get some pre-green reports. Let's start with Josh Sims. And let's start with the 77 of Chase Purdy. Things are trending in the right direction for this team, coming off their best finish of the season, third at Martinsville, coming to a place where they finished runner-up here last year. When I talked to Chase, he said, of course, that gives me confidence, but we have to keep this going. Well, they qualified 15, so they've got some work to do, but he said the race pace in this truck is really good. We have a chance to do something really well tonight. We just can't be ourselves Amanda well Josh's drivers and teams were making their way into Texas over the last couple days Ty Dillon was awaiting the arrival of his third child with wife Haley son Bear Dakota who is roughly 31 hours old right now joined the family over yesterday Ty stayed overnight at the hospital with that new bundle of joy right there had his backpacks and flew in with the RC RCR Xfinity team this morning proudly saying as you see their Dillon family of five the 25 truck will start on row 12. Congratulations, Haley and Ty. How exciting. Now he's got to focus. Jump in that truck and go for the win. We've got a few on boards for tonight. Yeah, we're going to ride along with Matt Kraft. And Matt has 30 top 10 finishes here at Texas, including 19 in a row at one time. And he's a two-time winner. He's going to start that Menards Ford from the 22nd spot. Welcome back, Zane Smith. We're going to hop on board this number 91, speedycash.com truck speedy cash how cool is that for the name of this race and a great sponsor for uh, zane smith we're going to watch for him to fly through this field maybe win this race tonight we're also going to ride along with our guy daniel die this is the race to stop suicide chevrolet daniel started in the starting in the sixth spot great qualifying effort remember we had the pole back at atlanta so looking for another top 10 finish Working that wheel, warming up those tires. That's what this is all about, making sure he's ready to go racing. Everything feels good behind the wheel of that truck. Daniel Dye here for the second time. You see right there, a lot of color going on on the inside. Stuart Friesen's Chili's sponsored truck. It's got, the menu. He's got peppers on that thing, yes, David. He it's going to be fast. You know it. It's a good looking truck. And gosh, that smile on his face, that, that was the old Stuart Friesen. There it is right there. You can actually see all the different items that you can uh, order at Chili's. Let's listen to Taylor Gray's radio. Take advantage of 
situations we can. Don't get something you know, you know yourself. It's going to be hard to pass here. Just be cautiously aggressive as we move forward and uh, just be smart about this. Be around at the end. I think we got a good shot at this deal, but you can do it. You're the man. Yeah, copy that. Appreciate all the hard work, fellas. Phil, did you ever understand? Dan, what cautiously aggressive meant? Were, were you good at that? <laughs> I don't think so. I got I got confused when they would say that. What am I supposed to do? You want to be cautious I, I, or aggressive? I can do one or the other. I don't know about two. Hard to pull both <laughs> off at the same time. I love his crew chief Jeff Hensley. Just so cool, calm, and collected to his driver, letting him know what's up. So drivers who've gone to victory lane so far this season, you see Christian Eckes last week became the first repeat winner of the season. A lot of youth on that board, Phil. Raja Karuth, there's Christian, as you mentioned, Corey Heim. Look at that grandfather clock. NASCAR racers, that's one of the most prized trophies in all the sport. Warming up those tires. What a beautiful night here it is. It's gonna be beautiful all weekend long. It's 250 miles tonight. It's one of the longer races of the season. And that's good news for Roger Carruth, dropping to the back. He says, I got those extra laps to make my way to the front. Yeah, Tyler Rankin as well. Remember, Tyler Rankin got into the wall along with Tanner Gray in practice. They have backup trucks at the rear of the field. That's got to be a little bit aggravating to be able to not know what you're going to have. God, he's probably apprehensive about the start of this thing, too. No kidding. When the flag dropped for practice today, two trucks right away, right in turn two, straight in the wall, straight to a backup. So it's first time behind the wheel of these backup trucks. As we get ready to go here, Nick Sanchez leading the field to green. Christian Eck is on the outside. Green flag is in the air. We are racing at Texas Motor Speedway. Pretty even as they head down into turn one. Watch these trucks on the outside. Really slippery out there on the outside. Remember what Christian Eckes did last week at Martinsville. Started on the outside of the front row, led the first lap and dominated. Can he poke his nose out front here on the first lap at Texas? Eckes was perfect on the restarts. The initial start and the restarts all night long. That'll be something to watch, but so is that two truck, Nick Sanchez. Oh, you see a truck slipping high. Was that Corey Heim back there? Losing some grip. He slipped way up the hill. That had to get his attention. I think he stayed out of the wall though. There's Johnny Sauter in that white truck behind the 77, Chase Purdy. The one of Chris Wright as well. He slowed up. We've got a couple trucks slow out of turn two. Corey Heim wiggles. Oh, big crash off 46, two. 46, Bad Moffitt hard into the wall. The caution is out for the first time. Wow, we talked about what a nice looking truck that is. That's Memphis. That's the 20 truck of Memphis Villarreal. One of those starting in the back for unapproved adjustments, but Thad Moffitt making his first start here at Texas. That truck is junk. Man. Mm, first so time much. with safety clean. A long time supporter of NASCAR on board that truck. So much anticipation. That's the worst feeling in the world. You talked about wrecking your truck in practice, which oh, is terrible. No. Oh, no. Tyler Ankrum in the backup truck. A lot of damage. That's going to end his night. Ankrum, four top tens, three of those top fives this season, off to the best start of his whole career, and what a day. You saw that right front tire. I think that's going to be terminal for that 18 truck of Ankrum. And for the 46. He's saying it's done. Yeah, definitely terminal with that as well. I talked about the wrecking in practice, and now Tyler Ankrum's had to experience both, wrecking early in the race. Worked so hard for these opportunities, and it's just heartbreaking for me as a race fan and a racer to see these guys have to go through this. Let's listen to the radio on Tyler Ingram. He hit him. Did you not hear me? I was doing all I could to slow down, Eddie. Hey guys, get ready. Hit the kill. That's Eddie to haunt his spotter. Obviously, it sounds like there was a little miscommunication or he missed something there, but here's a replay exactly what happened. See the 46, that's Thad Moffat, way out of the groove, up high. Really Fine. slippery. Nobody's really been up there. You see how oh, how hard his wheels are turned to the left. Something's wrong with that truck, I think, Phil. I mean, he was just Look trying Raja. to barely get by. Oh, and Memphis Biarral didn't there. make it by. Was there something wrong with it? Because he was trying. I mean, he's turning hard left. Yeah, you could see the left the left front tire turned so hard. Did he get make contact in the wall earlier before we see him, and that's why he couldn't steer the truck? Mm. No, there's no damage to the right side. That's interesting. 
Look, look See how, how he's turning? Yeah, look how far something's, he's turning. How hard he's turning to the left. Something's broke. Watch and, this. And then finally the truck, it grabs and finally does turn. Watch Raja get by. And sideways doing it. Oh my goodness. Well done by Raja Karuth. But you saw the one truck of Chris Wright. He was off the pace early. He was the first one to clip Moffitt there. Oh, heartbreaker for Tyler Ingram. I do you think it was a situation where he was just trying to turn hard left to keep that truck from going into the outside wall, and then finally those front tires, he slowed down enough with those front tires to get grip? I just, I've never seen one cut that hard and it not going anywhere. That was strange, but probably needed to just keep it up high, but it was weird looking. Under caution for the first time tonight for this first incident coming out of turn two. Damage to four trucks. We'll be back. From Fort Worth. Welcome back to the speedycash.com 250 and we're under caution for the first time. See Tyler Ingram, one of the contenders for the championship this season is out early. And our stat guys are listening to the radio and thinking possibly they're hearing some conversations that the steering wheel might have come off of that 46 truck and the way that tires were cut dead left and coming down the hill. That's certainly something that's a possibility because other than that, I just can't think of why the truck would have went that way. Maybe we can talk to Thad and get a little clarity after he visits the infield care center. I've seen a couple of times in my 40 some years in this sport of wheel falling off and it does go dead left when that had that would explain it. But maybe that's not what happened, but something definitely went wrong. The and wheels would have never no, been like this. No control over it, and he probably would not have just kept on turning left into the into the traffic like that. I'm trying to look and see. I see his left hand looks like it's on the steering wheel, but whoa, in the position where the steering wheel would be, but but not sure. We got all all boots on ground trying to figure this one out because we were also listening to the radio transaction and and the team was saying we can't figure out what would have happened and we haven't heard from from uh, Thad yet. 180 miles an hour. We slow it up and it's still hard to see what exactly happened. But poor Thad Moffitt, his rookie season here, just hasn't had much go his way. Matt Crafton, I'm going to come to the one to go. Crafton to the side of the top 20. I'm looking for him to steadily move toward the front, Phil. Most of all, talk in the garage was when they get to this choose, especially until we, we get a second groove built in over there in one and two that people may forego positions and rows to move to the inside. We'll see what happens. Looks like uh, obviously but then you see Lane Riggs. He's going to forego moving up on the outside to take the inside. Christian Eka says I got this baby. I'll start on the outside of that front row. I think I can get the lead. He was close to it uh, on the initial start. Oh uh -oh. that's trouble. Got a tear off on the grill there. Matt Mills Jake Electric Chevrolet. He needs to get up behind somebody right quick and Get that thing off. Essentially, you'll probably leave it on the racetrack and somebody else will pick it up. A lot of those guys doing what you said, Phil, giving up a spot or two to get that bottom groove. Early in the race, that's not a bad idea. We saw the 42 truck at Martinsville have issues with tape. And now he's got tape or plastic over the front of that truck. He needs to catch a break. It's like there's a magnet on his truck. Watch what happened to him last week. Hi, girls. How y'all doing? I think they're rowdy fans. Involved in this incident here. Matt Mills has an issue. The hood goes up. Bam. Bam. You can see he's looking out that little <laughs> tiny hole there. They come in. They're able to put that bear bond all well, around remember it. Remember, it's cold in Martinsville. Look at that. Violent. for that bear bond I mean, bond we're looking stick. at like 50 degrees. So they <laughs> gave it their all. Well, then the caution comes out again for bear bond on the racetrack. So looking for a better run here for Matt Mills. Hope that plastic comes off the front. So Nick Sanchez has led all seven laps so far. And this is where it's going to get fun on the restart. Nick Sanchez, so good at this. Christian Eckes, so good at restarts. And they were pretty even on the initial start. So here we go. First restart of the night. Nose to nose, heading down into turn one. Stuart Friesen is right there. Here comes Kyle Busch on the outside in the seven. He's not going to be able to clear Eckes is Sanchez. They'll race side by side off turn two. Nice corner by Eckes. Looking to go three wide now behind them. Sanchez. 
Just a shorter way around on the inside. They'll run this corner wide open with clean air. Stuart Friesen hanging side by side with Kyle Busch. Mentioned in the opening, Kyle's one of the last three starts he's had here. Look at Daniel Dye right there in the 43 truck. He's taking that high line by choice. This is a strong run early. A little bit of a slip there off turn two, as you see Grant Enfinger making some progress against him. Lane Riggs is going to push Enfinger. This is all for the fifth position. Watch Zane Daniel Smith drive back up. up on the outside. Oh, Lane squeezed right up behind Daniel and decides to go back to the bottom with Grant. Daniel with the momentum up high. Nice strong one run early for Daniel Dye. Nice move down in the corner now. He's up a little high, a little bit out of the groove, and see Grant fight back on the inside. Just behind them, Corey Heim, he wiggled in that initial start. Got it together, making his way forward in the 10th spot in the 11 behind this group. What a move by Daniel. Takes that high side, makes the pass. As you see, Corey Heim trying to rally after the bobble you talked about early, Jamie. Gets around Bailey Curry, and he's bringing Taylor Gray with him. That's ninth and 10th now for Heim and Taylor Gray. A couple of Tricon Garage teammates. Zane Smith there in the green truck, speedycash.com, looking to the bottom. As you can see, Nick Sanchez opens up a big oh, lead. Oh, Raja Carruth, trouble, goes around. The caution comes out for the second time. Doesn't I don't look see, like he has any damage. I don't, I don't see, see any damage. damage. All right, boys, let's get it ready for four tires, sir. Four tires. Well, we talked about the action that this track causes, the differing bankings in each end, and all the action we'll see. Half I'm, I haven't caught my breath since they threw the green flag. So much going on here. Well, this is the farthest back that Raja Karuth has had to start this season. He's a really good qualifier, and he qualified in the top 10, but he had to drop back for that tire that they had to replace. So he gets back there. The air is all over the place, and he's gone around, but thankfully for them, it's good. All these teams have four sets of tires for the race. The set they start on three in the pits. They're obviously going to put a set of tires on that 71 for Raja. More than likely ruin that set of tires. So he will have to forego changing tires more than likely at the end of the first stage because we'll only have a 20 some laps when we restart this race in the first stage. And to your point, 155 laps to go. He's got. You see him already sideways. That car that I'm highlighting there, that truck, excuse me. Around he goes, and man, just really fortunate. Just got spun up out or shoved up out of the groove somehow, but a really, really fortunate that he didn't get into the outside wall. Every incident we've had today from practice till now, turn two. You see, he hasn't got the brakes on either. He's letting those tires spin, keeping it away from the wall. That's a great move. Locks them up, feels a little bit of what he's faced with and then finally locks it down and allows the other drivers to choose their way around him. You try to spin those rear tires to get the forward momentum even when you're backing up towards the outside wall. He did a great job of that. Well let's hear from Tyler Ankrum who's out early Amanda. Yeah and out at the care center as well he said the first words were a bad day just gets worse. How do you digest this one Tyler? Uh. I, I don't even know. You hang out with the squirrels, you're going to get your nuts cracked. So that uh, it's uh, honestly my fault for being there in the back anyways and uh, my mistake in practice. So just going to try to some, fix some fast trucks and go to Kansas, I guess. I mean, it just, it's just, it's terrible. I don't even know what to say. Well, there's that. This whole uh, incident, something's definitely a miss on the 46. This whole incident has a lot of people confused. You can see. Chris Wright got some damage there. Tyler with just nowhere to go. You wouldn't expect that truck to be heading in that direction. Look at Raja sideways as he goes past. Great save for Raja, who we just saw bring out this second caution. Expecting him to come down and put some tires on, but so frustrating, heartbreaking. All this work, this effort, the garage open at 10 a.m. locally. These guys have had to work on it all day long, getting ready for tonight, and then your day is done so quick. Not to mention all the hours that these teams spend in the garage preparing for these races. All right, well, we've been wondering what in the world happened to Thad Moffitt. He's with Amanda. Thad, we took a, just took a look at the replay, and it looked like you were fighting that truck. What happened? Yeah, so we got, I mean, we had a big run getting down into one, and uh, I was pretty cautious. 
uh, I thought, and then we got kind of free getting in. I ended up saving that, keeping it out of the fence, and then when I tried to stay up, it just came down the racetrack on me. So, yeah, we're watching the replay right here, and it's like it's like something broke or something almost. It just came left on me. So uh, it was unfortunate. I hate it for my guys. We've had a crap start to the year. I'm ready for it to turn around, man. Um, it sucks. Um, I'm grateful to be here and have this opportunity, but uh, it's not fun. I want to run good, as uh, bad as you guys want to see it. So uh, hopefully we'll keep our head up and move forward to Kansas. A couple weeks off might be good for us. Thank you, Thad. Thank you. Richard Petty's grandson, you know, he watches every race. He gives Thad feedback on things he can do better. And I, I know it's just been a rough start for this young man. Well, as we were speculating what happened, how could that truck be turned like that? Uh, and the crew was talking back and forth could he could the wheel have come off it just didn't make any sense and it still really does it to me that he that he couldn't keep that truck uh, unless something broke and made it go left like that he would no way have the wheels cut that hard that would make no sense chris wright work continues on his race truck as drivers come to the choose cone Ooh, stuart Friesen gives up the front row gonna give that outside to eckes once again See Zane Smith in that green truck. He went high. Matt Crafton says, I'll give it a whirl, too. Yeah, they're definitely widening out that, that second lane. Ben Rhodes takes the outside. There's Raja Karuf. Got him fresh tires. Tomorrow on Fox, the United Football League kicks off week number three of action with a battle between the Memphis Showboats and the Birmingham Stallions. It all begins at 7 Eastern on Fox. Spring just got stronger, and it sure has. So much fun to watch these guys have a little bit of football in the spring. We're going to Talladega next. They're going to be in town in Birmingham to see the Stallions. I'm thinking about driving over there after uh, practice and qualifying and see what it's all about in person. We'll have the Harper Menard Series, first race since Phoenix. They've had a long break, so we're ready to get back in action for a few weeks. Strong start to this race for Daniel Dye in the race to stop suicide.com truck. There you see speedycash.com. He's got a great view for us as well. A couple trucks right up toward the front. Good to see Zane Smith back in the truck. It hasn't been easy going for him on the cup side of things and to come back over to the trucks and do what he loves so much. And he knows how to win over here. Nick Sanchez, Christian Eckes. Bannon out. Stuart Friesen taking a look. Kyle Busch taking a look. Wow, as they come out of turn number one through turn number two, can they keep it clean? Stewart's in a tough spot, sliding up the track, but he holds it off. Really tight there with Nick Sanchez. For the first time, Christian Eckes leads tonight. Just like that, Nick Sanchez slips back. Look at that truck wiggle. Sanchez fights back on the inside with that two truck. Sanchez lost all of, his, all of his momentum when Stuart Friesen tried to take him three wide, thought better of it, but certainly bobbled Sanchez in that two truck. Pseudo teammates here, Rev Racing for Nick Sanchez. Spire Motorsports is Kyle Busch. Trucks wow. out of the same shop. They're fighting for that space, aren't they? Yeah, they, they are. are. Look at Friesen back there in fourth. Zane trying to get underneath Friesen. Daniel Dye, so impressive, guys, from t when we saw him off the truck. A lot of speed there. Just getting stronger and stronger. He's had some good runs this year, had some speed. And right behind him, Lane Riggs, another truck that's been fast, had some issues, hadn't put a whole race together, but he says he still has the confidence because of the way he's able to run at times. There's that 38 truck looking low, right on the bumper of Daniel Dye. They've got Stewart up the track. Can Lane take advantage of it? No, Stewart's going to be able to hold that spot. You know, when we race under the lights at this particular place, people always comment how fast the trucks look. Well, the drivers say the same thing. This place just feels faster than them. Why is that? Because they are fast. They're, they're <laughs> booking it. But there's something about, there's multiple things that make them feel like they're just faster here than at another mile and a half you track. Get, you get more of a sensation of speed here for whatever reason than you do a lot of other racetracks. Here's Raja working his way back through the field. He's up to 21st after starting out back. So he's got a fast truck. Trying to size up. Wallace Allen. Wallace in that 33 truck to crack into the top 20. We'll hear more from Raja all night long. I guarantee it. 
And I think the fastest truck from what I've seen so far, Josh, is the two of Nick Sanchez. But right now, Chris Nackis has the point. Yeah, and that 19 has taken over the lead from Nick Sanchez. And when I caught up with Christian Eckes earlier, coming off his second win of the season, he said the truck today was eh. He felt like it was numb. It didn't have the handling. Now, it has the speed, and we're seeing that right now. His biggest thing that he came over the radio and just said, it is still snappy loose on him. So he's fighting it a little bit. But right now, he's led five laps and looking like the control truck right now. Josh, that's impressive because we talked to him after practice. He wasn't happy with his truck. He was lacking things. He was very straight faced, very focused, and here he is leading here. Five laps and counting. Christian Eckes continues to lead over Nick Sanchez, Kyle Bush, and Zane Smith. We're going to step aside. You won't miss a thing. We're going side by side. This is the make or break moment. Okay. Goodness. Not just for the day, but for the years to come. Has to win. This is where a race isn't just about the race. It's about the doors it can open. That kid is amazing. The number of fans wearing your number. This is the chance to carve your name into the history books. This is the NASCAR Xfinity Series. You must be Isaac. Come on in. Ah, here's my pride and joy. Beautiful stair renovation, sir. Ah. And they're covered with your home and auto bundle with Progressive, so you get round-the-clock protection. So is Gabby coming down? Oh, she says she'll meet you at the prom. Toyota Racing is looking for iron stomachs that can stand the pressure. This season, we want you. Join us at Toyota Racing. Toyota Racing is looking for quick draw thumbs that leave their own smoke trail. This season, we want you. Join us at Toyota Racing. All new Subway wraps are packed with delicious ingredients and a pillowy lavash wrap. Finally, a refreshing lunch that tastes amazing. Perfect for pro athletes like me, right? Can I finish? Buy one wrap, get one 50% off in the Subway app today. Saturday on FS1. Texas, the home of the last two World Series champions and home to a brewing rivalry. And he gets hit by the pitch here. The benches are clearing in the American League Championship Series. Now, in the next chapter, Corey Seager leads the Rangers. Are you kidding me? Against Jose Altuve and the Astros. That is a monster shot. Saturday at 4 Eastern on FS1. This is going to be a good one. The fans at Kansas Speedway know how to have a good time, and you are all invited. NASCAR Weekend at Kansas Speedway. Get your tickets now at kansasspeedway.com. What a beautiful sunset here at Texas Motor Speedway. Working lap 28 of 167. You didn't miss a thing up front. Christian Eckes continues to lead Nick Sanchez. There it is. Look at that beautiful mm. pink sky. Perfect. What a great night. Love racing under the lights. The way those trucks sparkle. I, I'm loving this battle for the lead. At one point, I said... Nick Sanchez is the fastest truck because he was trying to pass Eckes, and I'm going to say it again. But as soon as he got to him, he couldn't make the move, and then here come Kyle. And he looked like he had the best truck, but I think that, too, is the class of the field. And both these guys right now have Kyle Busch's number. When we went side by side, I, think, I said, I think Kyle Busch has the best truck. Now Nick Sanchez has been able to drive away from him. And look just behind Kyle Busch as we pan out a bit. There's Zane Smith talking about Zane and him needing a good run after some struggles in the Cup Series. And behind him, Daniel Dye. So Daniel's probably having his career night. This is the best start, the most competitive he's been. He's been running around 10th a lot, 10th to 15th. Now he's up in the top five in this number 43 track. Great qualifying effort in sixth and now up to fifth. And Stuart Friesen, we're talking about him and the day he's had so far in sixth right now. Only one top 15 finish this year, Michael. He hasn't even had a top 10. Perhaps he changes all that tonight. I hope he does. Such a great spirit in the garage area. Loves what he gets to do. Has a really pretty truck. As you see, Johnny Sauter, the veteran, looking for another victory here at Texas, holding off Tomajeski. 
Oh, five-time winner here. It's good to see Sauter back in the field. That's got to feel so good as a retired guy coming out here and being competitive. And you have no idea how hard that is for these for driver like Johnny Sauter to jump in with these other drivers that do it week in, week out. Now, Johnny Sauter, obviously his credentials speak for themselves. Five-time winner here, multi-time champion here in the truck series, champion in the truck series, multi-time winner. But uh, it's not easy just to jump in one of these trucks and race against these guys that do it every week. But he's with the team that knows how to get it done. They won this race with Phil Gould last year with Carson Hosevar, got his first career win. They flopped the numbers a little bit, but he's got a great team behind him. It's fun to watch him going forward. That red truck, black and red truck in the back is Stefan Parsons. He's joined this battle for a spot inside the top 15. Johnny Sauter up ahead. There's Stefan in the red truck. Great opportunity for him to learn from some of these guys. It was so good. Tom Majeski, one of our contenders week in, week out. They lapped around Keith McGee in that 22 truck. Keith did a good job keeping her low and out of the way. Okay, here the scenario at the front changes again. <laughs> Kyle Busch has the fastest truck. Imagine that. Battle for second right here. Look at this. I know Nick Sanchez has leaned on Kyle Busch last year, this year. And this is the best way to learn. You guys always say you tuck up behind him and you just kind of watch what he does. It's amazing the success he's had. What does he won here? 19 times? 19 times between the three national series, going for his sixth truck series win. And Kyle loves it. It's all about winning. And gosh, we talk about Zane Smith struggling on Sundays. Kyle Bush is right there as well. He needs a good run just to give him a little boost. Look about to tell that guy Martin Trucks in the race. He seemed awful happy. He was pumped. <laughs> Christian Eck is holding the lead. It'd be interesting to see if that seven truck of Kyle can close in. Just six and laps to go in this stage, Mike. This stage win would be huge for Eck because you've got to collect those playoff points. Kyle Busch couldn't care less about it, but he wants to win the stage. He doesn't need his points. He just wants to win. <laughs> he wants to win everything. That's right. 40 laps in stage one, 40 laps in stage two, 87 laps will be the final stage this evening. What do you think Christian Eckes is thinking when he looks in the mirror and sees Kyle Busch there again? So I wonder if that's Kyle Busch in that green truck. <laughs> I beat him at Bristol. I'll take him down in this stage. I think Kyle is coming. Let's see what the lap time was that last time. Almost exactly the same, only a couple hundredths of a second difference. Lap in another truck, and that's bad news for Roger Carruth. Roger la lost a lap when he had that flat tire. So uh, he's not in the free pass position, Amanda. Yeah, and catching up on the story. So he did replace four tires from that original spin, came in, took those new tires, went back out, had a flat tire, came in and took two right side tires. So now six tires here for Rajah Karuth in stage one. How much of a back foot does that put Rajah on, Michael? Uh, you know, it just depends on the cautions and how this race plays out. I think it's not huge at this point. What's more important is the fact that he's not going to get the free pass when this stage ends. And I don't think he will stay out either. I think that he'll have to come in to get fuel. We'll see how he plays it. Yeah, Spencer Boyd right now in that free pass position back there in 28th. When this stage ends, he would get it. Mason Massey just ahead of Boyd. Last truck on the lead lap. There's Christian Lane Riggs, as you see there, in the 38. Corey, Corey Hyman, though. Oh, here's the battle for the lead. It's heating up. Here's Kyle Busch. First time. Can he lead tonight? He does it. Takes he, the lead from Christian Eckes. He is the man. Two laps to go in first stage here at Texas Motor Speedway. Kyle Busch, is that remember when you beat me at the start? <laughs> Look at that seven truck just wrapping that bottom and you see Christian slipping up there off turn two. You know, the, a couple of adjustments though. Christian Eckes is a smart racer. He's going to be able to tell his team what he needs. Same thing with Nick Sanchez. These trucks are really close together. You hit the right adjustment, the track changes a little bit. That could be the difference in everything. One lap to go here in stage number one. That's Raja, that blue truck, right? A couple trucks in front of Kyle. He certainly doesn't want to lose another lap. Kyle Busch making his fourth start of five allowed in the truck series. Working his way around lap traffic. And 
he gets it. Kyle Busch wins stage number one, his fourth stage win this year. That's the most of any drivers. Christian Eck is second. Nick Sanchez, Zane Smith, Stuart Friesen, Daniel Dye. Lane Ritz back there hangs on to that seventh spot. Points awarded all the way down to 10th. You see Corey Heim picked up one spot. We're not going to give Kyle Busch any points. Though. He gets zero. He gets zero. But congratulations, you got the win. That's right. That's all he cares about. You'll get zero and you'll like it. <laughs> we'll have pit stops coming up after this. Christian Eckes has led the most laps tonight at 21. We're racing under the lights in Texas. Stage number one in the books from Texas Motor Speedway. As you see the points there, Kyle Busch, we said you get no points and you will like it. As they make their way down pit road, you see Taylor Gray all the way down the bottom picks up one point. They're coming your way, Amanda. Well, Daniel Dye has a new spotter in his ear this weekend. He's actually familiar with them from ARCA. Joe White on the call came in saying that he was loose on the throttle in one and two. They will make adjustments there. And you look at the 91 of Zane Smith. They said that the truck was free requesting rear grip, but I talked to Josh. And for the 19 of Christian Eck, he said that truck got tight towards the end of that run, but he feels like the track is changing as well. No adjustments, just four tires and fuel for the seven of Kyle Busch. Said it's an overall lack of grip. Felt like that thing was sliding around on him, but still able to get the stage win, Jamie. All right, so interesting. Christian Eck has no adjustments there. Kyle Busch, hard to tell if he just made an air pressure adjustment. All right, the 43 here, take a look at the right front. Just looked like it wouldn't come off. Maybe it didn't drop out far enough, Michael. Watch, see him try to pull it and try to pull it. He doesn't go back to the wrench. I think he's waiting for the shock to drop far enough for that tire to come off, and that's gonna cost him a bunch of positions. Yeah, he was sixth position when he came to pit road. He's gonna be outside the top 10. Tough break for Daniel Diven talking about how well he's been running. Beautiful truck, how about that? Whoa. Opening ceremonies, that little guy likes it. Stay with us from Texas. Welcome back to the Craftsman Truck Series. Race number seven on the season. Kyle Busch, Christian Eckes will restart on the front row. Eckes has led 21 laps, Sanchez 16, and Kyle Busch eight laps and counting. As we gear up for another restart here, Kyle Busch has certainly been the man at Texas. Little wheel spin there on the outside lane by Eckes. Kyle gets a nice start, but a big push from Nick Sanchez. And look at there, Corey Heim goes three wide. Guys, Corey Heim was ninth at the end of that stage, picked up four spots on pit road. Now he's in second position. Oh, big slip there by Dean the five Thompson. of Dean Thompson. They stay off each other. Four wide back there in the middle of the back stretch. What a mess. Kyle Busch, Corey Heim. Look at this battle side by side behind him. Nick Sanchez and Christian Eckes. They're battling all over this racetrack. Matt Crafton up top, as you see, Stuart Friesen. Look at that move Crafton makes. Shoots between those trucks. That was awesome. That squeezed him up inside How the top 10. Wide. Ben Rhodes, haven't talked much about him tonight. He had a tough practice today, Jamie. Not a lot of speed in that truck, but seems to be rallying. Track's changing, you know, it's darker, it's cooler. It could come to him. Ben Rhodes now up to the 13th spot in that 99 truck. Next to his what about this? Connor Jones, look at this. Corey Heim, the great pit stop. Now we can see what he has in that race truck. He's, he battles Kyle Busch here for the lead. He's stuck it in on the outside, Phil, and turns one and two and almost grabbed the lead. That's a great move. What a battle between these four. This is exciting. That outside's only going to get better, too, down in one and two. Great four-truck battle right now for the lead. Got three young truck racers taking on Kyle Busch. Corey Heim has just been so impressive. Top 10 every single race this year. He's the most consistent driver in the field. Last year was the same story. Then he gets a dose of Kyle Busch and to go head-to-head -head with him. I know Corey embraces that. Remember in the opening, I said, what happened to Kyle Busch? <laughs> Corey, Christian, <laughs> Nick, Taylor. That's what's happened to Kyle Busch. Look at these guys all over him. 
but he's the king right now. Can he hold on? And remember, some of these drivers, the, the two immediately behind him, both drove for him. He's trained these guys. And he's still training. You see him down on pit road helping Raja Carruth. Anybody that comes up and wants to know how they can be better, he's there for them. Nick Sanchez as well. Remember, for Rev Racing, they, were, they had an alliance with KBM last year. This is the battle back for 17. Stuart Friesen shuffled back there. And Chase Purdy talked about his great finish last weekend in third at Martinsville. Finished second here a year ago. He's very optimistic about this race. He's got some work to do, though, back in 18th. I love this racing all over the track. These two, they can't shake each other. Battle for third. Sanchez is going to try to grab that from Christian because he has him cleared off turn four. Sanchez and the two truck got the win at Daytona. Christian Eckes picked up the wins at Bristol and last week again at Martinsville. You can't shake Taylor Gray as well. <laughs> That's right. He's right there. Taylor Gray, it's not a matter of if he's going to win it. It's just when he's going to get to victory lane this year. I feel the same way about Ty Gibbs and Cup. You know, there's some guys they just show you week in and week out. This is Raja. He's in the free pass position right now. So if the caution were to fly, he would be the get back on the lead lap. A couple of trucks ahead of him though that are on the lead lap really slow that uh he needs that caution quickly is my point raja Karuth they come down on lap 43 but they just pulled some fenders took a look at it they can't afford to take more tires so he's got to hang on to it take care of those tires till the end of this stage he's running some pretty decent lap times though so he should be okay chris wright is the truck behind him one lap down and chris wright just ran a fast lap as well he's got damage too on that one truck so talk about not getting to race very often and get out there and get your legs under you chris wright's doing a nice job too there you see that one truck all, all that damage all been up on the sides but he's able to keep pace with raja just ahead of him there love that red white and blue paint scheme they had to work on that truck the first caution that came out damaged four trucks he was one of them but he's able to continue We'll see him again next week at Talladega in the Arkham Menards series race. Lane Riggs, the 38, trying to size up the nine of Grant Enfinger. It's a battle for the eighth position. Nick Sanchez ran in that third position a couple three tenths faster than Corey Heim last time by. And I'm keeping my eye on that two truck. I really think that he's got the truck that he can contend for this win with. Lane Riggs, first time here in a truck, not 38. Nice young team around him. Sure, many of them were there when Zane Smith was there and won the championship in 22. He told us during our practice show that he ran the Xfinity race here last year. He said, but I, I ran two laps and then and then crashed in practice. Hard to learn anything when you're not finishing the laps, right? Whoa, Johnny Sauter really close to catching Connor Jones as Stephen Parsons gets up under Connor Jones. All back there battling for that 15th spot. Really hard to hold your Ooh. truck down when you got one right on your side like that. Matt Crafton down low. Wow. We talk about battling all over the racetrack. We've got it here in the trucks at Texas. Crafton had just picked up a couple spots, made it into the top 10. Now he shuffled back to 14th just like that. There is great action all over the racetrack. Kyle Busch continues to lead over Corey Heim. Stay with us. We're going side by side. Your best days of the year start here at Kubota Orange Days. It's the year's biggest selection of Kubota tractors, zero-turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA. Plus the year's best deals, like 0% APR for 84 months or up to $3,300 off select compact tractors. Orange goes all day. Sales ending soon. Visit your local dealer today. Find your nearest dealer at KubotaOrangedays.com. The Cantina Chicken Crispy Taco isn't just a late night taco. It's a seasoned and slow roasted chicken taco that pairs nicely with the new avocado verde salsa at any time. Introducing the new Cantina Chicken Crispy Taco, only at Taco Bell. What does fearless look like? Like sliding through a glimmer of daylight? Side by side for the top spot. Like trading paint with a champion? Oh, and he spins like starting in the back of the pack.
I'm stopping at nothing till everyone is choking on your dust. What does Fearless look like? Find out for yourself. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. It's that time of year again. Answer the question, ladies. When the boys in blue don't move, get a much earned. You should be more nice. Break. Cops Spring Break. New episode tonight on Fox Nation. The only place to watch new episodes of Cops. America is streaming. Weeknights on FS1, Race Hub is your home for the only daily NASCAR show. Built by the experts for the diehard fans. Covering the stories, the drama, and the excitement. Yeah! NASCAR Race Hub, weeknights at 6 Eastern on FS1. The Lady in Black. Shall we dance? NASCAR Throwback Weekend at Darlington Raceway. Get your tickets now at DarlingtonRaceway.com. 61 laps in of 167 lap race here at Texas Motor Speedway. Kyle Busch continues to lead over Corey Heim and Nick Sanchez. Well, we talked about the 88 of Matt Crafton going to break. He was going backwards. Josh, what's happening? Yeah, for Matt Crafton, he's got a great track record here. Two wins, 17 top fives, but tonight he is fighting that truck. He said, I have no straightaway speed right now. Just a few minutes ago over the radio, said this truck is super free. He's hanging on. Feels like it's so sideways to the the point coming out of the turn where he almost thought he had a flat tire. They said, hold on until we can get you to the end of the stage and get you some more tires. But Crafton is not happy with how free that truck is, to say it lightly, guys. He's got to hang on and keep, keep that gas down or he'll get lapped. That truck is really, you know, you say he doesn't have any straightaway speed when you're sideways in the corners. That'll hurt your straightaway speed. But it certainly hurt the momentum up off the corner. <laughs> I see Brett Holmes going to try to make his way underneath Crafton. Matt was running 10th when he started having this issue. All, all the way back to 18th right now. Brett Holmes in the 32, one of the five trucks that had to start in the rear for unapproved adjustments. And he's on the move in 19th right now. That's a good run for Brett, just steadily yeah. waking his way through the field. And now he's going to try to size up Crafton. Had a bit of an issue with front camber that they changed some shims, and that sent him to the back, but might have been a good idea. You see his progression there. And then. Then you hop on the speedycash.com on board with Zane Smith. Zane's in the sixth position. Trying to chase down the 17 of Taylor Gray. That's him right up ahead of Zane. Lap after lap, Kyle Busch is consistently the fastest truck. Second fastest is our fourth place running truck lately, and that's Christian Eckes. So Still a lot of racing to go here. Long race at Texas. These guys have got a lot to figure out. We haven't talked a lot about the draft. These trucks draft here. We have speeds upwards of 180 miles an hour average. So these trucks get a big suck off those big, huge cabs of these trucks. So that's why these guys are able to make up so much ground down the straightaways. Stuart Friesen, a great qualifying effort, Amanda. But man, they've dropped. What's going on? Hearing that on entry, his truck is twitchy. You have to remember he told us that trick here to Texas is patience. Well, he's trying to have patience in that truck here tonight, too. Jimmy Villeneuve, his crew chief, has come over to Stuart Friesen this year, talked to him today. He's like, baby steps, we're still working on it. We're building new trucks this year and just changing things, making differences from the ground up. And it's been a struggle. And he said, we know that it's going to be a struggle for quite some time, but this summer we should start hitting our stride. I feel like today they brought that fast truck and we just saw Stuart Friesen and that smile. They were happy early, but now that the sun has gone down, the lights have come on, that truck just not where they want it to be. Guys, this is a driver I've been keeping my eye on, and I have for a lot of years, too. Johnny Sauter. Johnny restarted well outside the top 15, now all the way up to the 10th spot, doing a nice job in this Nice Motorsports Chevrolet. As you mentioned, Phil Gould calling the shots for Johnny here. Really doing a nice job. Has a fast truck. Rotation of drivers in that 45 truck this season. Kyle Busch continues to lead here. 12 to go in stage number two. Stay with us. Welcome back to NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Racing Live from Texas. Michael Waltrip, Bill Parsons, Jamie Little with you. Josh Sims and Amanda Busick on pit road. As stage number two winds down here, about six laps to go. Kyle Busch continues to lead. He's now led the most laps tonight. 
see Matt Mills here going the lap down. Mason Massey already had, just give you an update on Raja Karuth. He will not get the free pass if we stay green here. So his troubles continue. He slipped back to the eighth spot and Daniel Dye, we showed on his pit stop, he had a problem changing the right front. Just took a little bit of time getting it off. That cost him quite a few spots. He restarted 12th and he worked his way up to sixth, I believe, and now has lost a couple spots. But a nice comeback just shows how strong that truck is. Exactly. A few laps ago, we saw that blue truck right in front of him pass Daniel on the outside down in one and two. So that's Lane Riggs. He has a good truck as well. Right now running seventh. And he's making moves. You can see he's way faster right now than Zane Smith. He's going to swing to the inside. We know this kid has the talent to do just what he's doing here tonight. Really fast in his races he got to run in last year. Just a bunch of bad luck. Talked to him earlier today. He said, we just haven't put a race together, but we've done enough to where we know we can, and he's doing it tonight. Zane's very familiar with that 38 truck as well. He drove that truck for... <laughs> that has to be a little strange, right? Exactly, yes. Like, I know that. Those are my boys. <laughs> His longtime race engineer, Dylan Capello, is actually the crew chief now. As Chris Lawson, the crew chief from the last few years on this truck, moved up to the Cup Series. He's working with Justin Haley. But he's still on board with this team. He still sits on the pit box, still advises this team. So some familiar voices over there. But Zane Smith with Hilgeman Racing. McAnally Hilgeman Racing this year, part-time, of course. That truck just in front of him put him on the map. <laughs> if it weren't for that did. ride, we wouldn't know be talking about Zane Smith. Two laps to go in stage number two. Let's get an update quickly on Johnny Sauter. Talk about Johnny Sauter coming back here into the Craftsman Truck Series. This is the second time that we've seen him this season. I asked the 2016 champ what it's like to come in here with the reputation of knowing that you're one to beat. He said, well, I'm just out here to perform. I don't care what anyone thinks. This is Johnny's 27th start here at Texas. And when you know that there's 50 total races in the Craftsman Truck Series at Texas, that's a pretty cool stat. Really cool stat. Love to see it. And he's running 10th right now. So great truck. We'll see what he can do here as we're rounding out the final lap here of stage number two. Kyle Bush won stage one. And it looks like, guys, he's going to get stage number two. <laughs> Coming to that. And he does. Officially, Kyle Bush, Nick Sanchez, Christian Eckes, Corey Hyman, Taylor Gray round out the top five. Yeah, Michael and I have been watching the scoring monitor, and that <laughs> Nick Sanchez, once he grabs second spot, has been fast. Yeah, he's running a lap times a couple of tits faster than Kyle. Kyle must have got a radio report from the two from the team saying two's fast. He picked it up pretty much on those last couple of laps. So caution is out for the fourth time. We'll have pit stops coming up next. Welcome back to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series live from Texas Motor Speedway. I love the tunes. Buddy. Oh, yeah. I got some country music going on, some cowboy, cowboy boots, and these guys right here are getting ready to kick it into gear when they come to pit road. They sure are. Kyle Busch wins stage number two. That means he has swept the stages for tonight. Look at that technology. Got that light on his helmet so he can see what's going on. There's your stage points. Look at that. Christian Eck is Nick Sanchez maximizing the opportunity with 17 points each. They're all coming down pit road. Amanda, coming your way. Well, right after the end of the stage, Daniel Dye said to his radio, can I get a high five for that restart? And they said, no, I'll give you a double high five. On that last pit stop, they had an issue with the shock bleed that might happen here as well. Daniel asked if there was anything that they could do. As you see, it's taken a little, little time there. They said, we'll just have to wait it out. And then with Zane Smith still loose on that truck, Josh. For the new two of Nick Sanchez, he said that truck fired off a lot less free this last run. Doesn't want to make too many adjustments because the way the track is changing. And for Kyle Busch, lacking grip early in the race, so the truck was much better during this last run. He said keep the adjustments minimal, Jamie. What I heard is Kyle Busch, Nick Sanchez, happy with the truck. Don't make any changes. This is going to be fun. And another great pit stop by Taylor Gray's guys. Three spots. Great job by that team. Can Kyle Busch hang on and win for the 20th time right here at Texas? Stay with us to find out.
no doubt it's been an action-packed evening so far for race number 50 for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series here at Texas Motor Speedway. Hard to believe, 50th race. More, more, more than any other race in, racetrack in the Truck Series. The thing I like is we've seen a lot of great racing, not the caution flags we saw yes. last year. Don't jinx us Oh, now. I know, I know. As soon as we say it. I know. We've had four cautions tonight for 20 laps. Of course, two of those were at the stage break. So it's been a pretty relatively clean race so far. Yeah, but watch this restart. And we know as laps go by, intensity picks up. And we've seen guys make it three wide down into turn one. That could be where the action picks up. And we have some contact. Watch this restart closely as they head toward one. Guys, look at the 17, Taylor Gray. His pit crew has just been getting it done. Got him in position. First time he's restarting on the front row outside Kyle Busch. Christian Eckes all over Kyle's bumper. Three wide behind him. Everybody's looking for an opportunity. You see three wide back in the pack. Kyle Busch is going to go. Here comes Corey Heim on the inside. Can he pick up another spot? Look, Sanchez ran in the back of Taylor Gray. Taylor didn't have a good exit there. You see it cost him. Great battle for second. Nick Sanchez likes what he's seeing in that two truck. We'll be thinking about making it three wide here. Look at that big push Sanchez makes to the back of the 11. That two truck is fast. He can't let Kyle Busch get too far away, though. Nice run into one for Eckes on the outside. As Bill said, it's the money stage. 80 laps left in this race. Kyle Busch has control. I saw Daniel die back there battling for position. You see him right there in the 43 truck. Had a hang up on the right front again on that second stop, but he's battling back. Yeah, and that's not going to fix itself. His next pit stop, he's going to have the same issue as well. It Haven't seen a ton of fall off on these tires. He might have to consider if it's a green flag stop, not changing right sides. And we oh. will have to stop one more time this evening. Taylor Gray. Trying to grab that fourth spot from Sanchez. And look at behind them, Lane Riggs just getting better and better. Watch that 38 truck. It's really getting it together. As you see, Christian Eckes has run down our leader. Battle up front. There's battles all over the racetrack. Ran in, think of that nine truck as well. Here comes Majeski in the 98 <laughs> underneath the 38 of Lane Riggs. Battle right. for seventh right there on the right side of your screen. And there's Zane Smith making it three wide. Picks off the 98. Now he's looking at Lane Riggs in the 38. Meanwhile, Christian Eck is trying to figure out how to make some room, some time up on the seven. You know how much it would mean to Christian Eck is to be able to take Kyle Busch down again. He took him down on the half mile. Now he wants to take him down on the mile and a half. Make a statement here in Texas. Daniel Dye racing Majeski. Oh, he's getting the loose. The contact. That makes me nervous when they go down on the bottom like that and hanging onto the truck is so difficult. Johnny Sauter saw all that. He's going to try to take advantage of it. Daniel's hanging tough, though. He said, I can get it done on the bottom. Another move by Eckes to try to get the lead from Kyle Busch. There goes Daniel. There goes Johnny. And up the track goes the 98. And there goes Majeski the other way. Oh, he lost second. And there goes Corey Hunt. There's so much <laughs> movement. Everywhere. He lost it's second. The momentum lost, right? Yes, that's exactly right. And you'll get look at Taylor here, Taylor Gray around Sanchez. Man, this is great battling. Ben Rhodes and Stuart Friesen racing for 12th. There's Matt Crafton. Remember the truck so loose he wasn't having any straightaway speed. He's got her fixed up now. J-Rod had to work on that truck a little bit for him. Hanging right in here with Ben Rhodes, his teammate. I like this 19 truck. I know he when he tries to make the move on Kyle, he loses his momentum, and then that allows guys to catch up with him. But he is fast. This racetrack is all about momentum, isn't it? They're, they run so close to wide open. Not as much down in one and two as three and four, but it's about momentum. And right now, Eckes is trying to get back underneath Corey Heim. Meanwhile, Taylor Gray in the 17, keeping his eye on this battle. He restarted on the front row, slipped back. He's in the fourth spot now. Eckes creeping up high to try to get the angle and the run off the corner to make a move. And get some fresh air on the nose of that truck as well, Michael. Watch 
how treacherous the outside of turns one and two. You want to creep up there, but you better just creep up there because look outside the groove, how shiny that racetrack is. It is wildly slick looking. I don't believe that. I don't think those drivers don't notice that. Look at this run right here. He closes up on the bumper of the 11 truck, and then he falls back. It's almost like an accordion. You guys talk about the air here in the, the momentum. The draft and the draft. And, he, and moving up like that, that gives him a little bit of momentum, a little boost coming off the corner, and that draft will pull him right up to that truck. Kyle Busch liking what he's seeing, seven-tenths of a second lead over that battle behind him for Ooh. second. See that shiny racetrack, Phil? How would you like to venture up into that? It looks like ice. <laughs> it does. That's crazy. I'm out on that, buddy. <laughs> I heard from a couple drivers today. They were talking about that very thing. They said, when you're in the truck, you don't see it. But when you go back and you watch the race, you're doing your research, you see it, and you know, okay, I don't go up there. But when you're behind the wheel, it's hard to know that. Rely on your spotter, right? Absolutely. What a battle for second. Look at these truckers all over the racetrack. 71 laps to go. Kyle Busch is in control of the race at Texas. Looking for a smarter way to mop? Try the Swiffer Power Mop. An all-in-one cleaning tool that gives you a mop and bucket clean in half the time. Our cleaning pad has hundreds of scrubbing strips that absorb and lock dirt away. And it has a 360 degree swivel head that goes places a regular mop just can't. So you can clean your home faster than ever. So mop harder, mop smarter with the Swiffer Power Mop. I haven't eaten there in a while. No one has. You want to say that to my face? I've never tried Arby's. It was just a joke everyone makes. Ha <laughs> ha. Just a joke, Here, try this. The skyscrapers in the background and Lake Michigan alongside the racetrack. NASCAR is coming back to Chicago. A 4th of July weekend festival of music and racing through downtown Chicago's iconic streets. Oh, how's the fall, boys? It's gonna be a good one. The biggest names in music headline the stage, while the brightest stars in NASCAR chase the checkered flag. <laughs> That's so cool. The Chicago Street Race Weekend. For tickets and experiences, visit NASCARChicago.com. Saturday on FS1. Texas, the home of the last two World Series champions and home to a brewing rivalry. And he gets hit by the pitch here. The benches are clearing in the American League Championship Series. Now, in the next chapter, Corey Seager leads the Rangers. Are you kidding me? Against Jose Altuve and the Astros. That is a monster shot! Saturday at 4 Eastern on FS1. Is this how you dance on the razor's edge? How you beat the heat. Will this gladiator be the last one standing? Last question. Are you not entertained? And the great battle continues. <laughs> There's battles all over the racetrack. Nick Sanchez ahead of Corey Heim. Meanwhile, Kyle Busch continues to lead. He's extended his lead over Christian Eckes. 66 laps to go here in the Lone Star State. Eckes ran about the same speed Kyle did that lap. Sanchez only a half a tenth off. Whoa, look at this battle. Back here, battle for 17th. We talked about they are racing hard all over this <laughs> racetrack. I'm glad we're side by side because I was loving the action we were seeing during commercial. All this passing and running the high lane. Raja Karuth in the 25th spot. He is right now in the free pass position. We saw the five truck right up there on the top of your screen, oh. Dean Thompson. That was the end of this race last year. Look, the hits hard just hits. keep coming, too. That is so painful to watch. Had such a good race going. Spent so much time up in the top five. Raja is, as you mentioned, in the 25th spot, but he is in the free pass position as of right now. Yeah, but Tanner Gray in that backup truck and Ty Dillon are on the backside of the top 25. So they're going to be lapped soon. Raja's hoping for a caution. And the way they're racing, I'm surprised we haven't seen more. <laughs> it's been crazy action. But I love how the racetrack has widened out. We see guys now able to make moves on the outside in both ends of the racetrack. Christian Eckes ran a 29.98 last time around the racetrack. A quarter of a second faster than Kyle Busch as we ride along with Daniel Dye. Daniel Dye in ninth right now, just ahead of Ty Majeski.
He's looking back at Majeski. Yeah, solid race though for Daniel Dye. Certainly is. Overcoming that adversity on pit road. They just had issues with that right front. Riding along with Matt Crafton. Currently in the 14th position. 30. Looking up ahead at Ben Rhodes. 30 top 10 finishes here at Texas. That's wild. Three time pole setter, a two time winner. Ben Rhodes is one that's had a rough season. Just looking for a solid night to turn things around. He's having a solid night, just he not is. the speed we're used to from these four sport trucks. Right Watch. Majeski is the only Thor Sport truck we have in the top 10. Watch this line that Christian Eckes is running. We talked about that shiny part up high. He just keeps creeping up there more and more next to it, especially down in one and two. And every time he cranks off a 2990 accomplish, comes back with a 2990 as well. Looking in that mirror and just running as hard as he needs to right now. That's fun to watch when you venture up off the bottom and make it work like we're seeing Eckes do. And there's grip all the way to the top where there isn't any grip anymore. <laughs> it goes away in a hurry, doesn't fine it? Line. There's the separation from first to second. And look right up there next to the shiny part. I don't like the shiny part. <laughs> Three different lap leaders tonight. Kyle Busch now has led 70 laps the most. Christian Eckes with 21 laps led, and Nick Sanchez, who started on the pole, 16 laps led. Sanchez right now in the third spot. Michael, tell us how fast those two leaders ran that last lap. Oh, they ran the fastest laps I've seen in the last 20 laps. I've not seen them down to 29.77. That's what Kyle Busch ran. And guess what Eckes ran? A 78. He's tracking them, but every time he steps up, steps up the speed and on the gas, Kyle responds. Kyle Busch's last win came here in July of 2020. Guess who finished second? No. Christian Eckes oh. in a Kyle Busch Motorsports <laughs> truck. Remember, he was running back, th back then for Kyle. Another one of those Thor Sport trucks. Ben Rhodes in 13th. What's he saying, Amanda? Yeah, you guys were talking about his season to this point. I talked to the two-time champion. He said he's not panicked at this point into the season that anything can change at any time. You'll remember it took until Charlotte of last stress your race craft. He said it's really important for you to know your competitors' tendencies and how they race tonight. And with that is experience, right? Knowing who you're racing around, your competitors you've been out here on the track with for many years, but the question mark is always the rookies, the young guys, right? What are their tendencies at a place like this? Lane Riggs heads to pit road on the right side of the screen. There's Stephen Parsons in the trophy tractor truck. Trophy Harrison. tractor truck. That's fun to say. Yeah. We've got a tire issue. You nailed Lane, it, Mikey. <laughs> Lane Riggs with a tire issue, a fast truck. We've talked all night about him putting a race together. Darn it. He has problems here again. This is his last set of tires. Now, he can, he can elect to put tires back on if he wants to, but this is his last set of tires, new set of tires that he has. Again, we're just barely outside our pit window. Barely. So if... He was going to need some caution laps, I think, to be able to make it. Everyone said 50 to 55, maybe on the outside. As you can see, we have 56 laps to go. Stephen Parsons back there having a great night. The Trying. 14th position, his fourth race this year, part-time. You guys talk about how hard it is for these drivers to jump in and out and then run up to speed with these with everybody else who's running full-time. Yeah, and he's racing around some really good guys. We saw him racing earlier with Majeski. Now he's right behind Matt Crafton. And here comes Kyle Busch. <laughs> Last time by 30 flat. And Eckes ran a 29.90. So a little bit quicker. You see that truck behind him trying to close in. Whoa, traffic for the leaders. Oh, and Eckes lost his momentum. And here comes Sanchez to take that spot. This has been so fun to watch all night. These two just can't shake each other from the drop of the green flag. And they're, they're both like, let's go catch that guy. Well, we can't. You go try it. I mean, they're all over Kyle Busch lap time-wise, but he puts that separation on them, and they just can't quite get there. And if they're battling side by side, all they're doing is going backwards, oh, right? Look at him. He's up in the slick stuff. He's going to lose momentum. Yeah. May lose that spot. Will lose that spot to Eckes. All right. Well, he made a run at him. Now Eckes says it's my turn again. That's, you can see what happens when you get up in the shiny stuff. You just lose grip, and man, it take, it, it'll shoot your heart rate straight through the ceiling. 
So much action. This is just the battle for second right here. Kyle Busch continues to lead. Green flag pit stops, perhaps. Coming up, stay with us. Welcome back to the SpeedyCash.com 250 as Kyle Busch continues to lead here at Texas Motor Speedway. Well, he's lapped up to 19th position. Brett Holmes next up for Kyle Busch. We saw Lane Riggs on and off pit road, got around Kyle Busch, and here comes Chase Purdy. Mentioned pit stops are getting ready to happen. Chase on the lead lap, he's coming in. The battle for third, left side of our screen. Corey Heim the 11th, Sanchez in the two. Corey Heim just will not go away. We talk about Eckes and we talk about Sanchez, and here's Corey Heim racing with him as we see Daniel Dye coming in, Amanda. Well, all night he's been battling a loose truck, just reported to the te team that now he's too tight. It will be last minute adjustments before they get back on the track for the finish of the stage. Trouble on that right front again, just that tire just doesn't want to come off. It causes them some problems each stop, Josh. And the two of Nick Sanchez coming into pit now. They worked on that truck all night long. The report early on in the race, it was free. They worked on it, worked on it, got better. Now they're hoping they have the final pit stop to put them in contention for the win. And Josh, these are the money stops. You can't afford a speeding penalty. You can't afford a problem on pit road. It might be too late to overcome it. We're at that point in the race where you've got to be perfect from here on in. See Grant and Finger in as well. You see Corey Heim making his way to pit road. This truck's been solid all night long, running pit road speed all the way down to his pit box. How frustrating that can be, knowing that pit way to stop is way down yonder. He slides to a stop. But this pit crew's been on it tonight. They picked him up a lot of positions each time down pit road. Let's see if they can help him out here, gain a little bit of time. 98 time when Jesse comes in. I think we see four tires from everybody here. So much time left in this race. See right side tires going on that Thor Sport Ford Road Ranger on the fuel panels. You see him holding the left side tires over. It's going to be four tires from a jet ski. And that was a smooth right side as they jack up the left side and go to work. I talked about the money stop. We're getting a report that Chase Purdy was speeding on pit road. Can't have that right now. Taylor Grain as they work on the right side of that race truck. We talk about how good that pit crew is week in, week out. You know, I just love the choreography. The driver has to do his part, stop perfectly. And then that just sets in motion these talented pit stop guys, pit crew members that are former college and pro athletes that go out there and do their job. Love talking about the pit crews we've been doing in the Cup Series, just showcasing who the guys are underneath the helmets, making such a difference in Sundays. It's been all about the pit crews. Win or losing races happens on the pit road almost every week. See Ty Dillon on in pit road he's getting left side tires already got his right side tires changed i met one of the pit crew guys down in the garage here today he's a former tennessee titan love it i said i, I like the lions he said well, i like the lions too <laughs> love telling those stories because they they bring these players in these athletes in from all over the country they all have different unique stories of how they got to nascar some were fans some never been to a race before and here they are pitting a truck or a race car so how long does kyle bush wait to come in well, we know he can go. He last pitted on lap number 83. We've run 43 laps. He can probably go at least another 10 laps. And he may choose to do that. His lap times, he ran a 29.92 that last lap. The tires are not falling off any, so he may try to maybe catch a caution before he pits and put a lot of these drivers a lap down that he's been having to race. You see the lap since last pit right there, Kyle Busch, 44. You got Eckes and Smith on that same strategy freezing Crafton as Ben Rhodes makes his stop you know we talk about the athletes on pit road that make these stops the driver has to do his part he better stop on his point because the stops are so choreographed these guys set into motion what goes down after he stops and here comes Stephen Parsons in the 75 truck off pit road heading toward turn two you got to stay on the apron stay on the bottom of the racetrack get all you can and get back up to speed here comes that Chili's truck <laughs> this makes me want to order something for chilies here comes our leader left side of your screen that'd be really conservative you saw that he got all the way down to pit road speed he's gonna take this truck all the way down pit road to the other end turn one in and make his pit stop Josh and from the seven of Kyle Busch comes in from the lead led 90 laps so far tonight that truck has got better all night 
night long sliding early. They worked on it, got it where they need it, as Kyle Busch is looking for his sixth truck win here in Texas. Here comes Christian Eckes too, Josh. That set into motion, second place. Eckes coming to pit road. You can see nicely controlled down to pit road speed there. No mistakes, we can't afford a mistake. Looked like a good stop for Kyle Busch. So 91, Zane Smith to the lead. Expecting him to make his way down pit road. Any minute. Corey Heim working his way through some traffic. We talked about Chase Purdy, that truck getting a penalty on pit road. Look at that big TV screen on the back straight. Well, you can see action all over this racetrack. What do they call that thing? Big Hoss. Big Hoss. They were the first to do it here. There goes Christian Eckes off pit road. Green flag pit stops, always entertaining for me. You see the seven go by. That's the difference right now between Kyle Busch the seven and Eckes in the 19. He inherited the lead when Kyle came down pit road. Now he's going to find himself probably about two or three seconds behind anyway. And here comes Zane Smith in the speedycash.com truck to pit road. He had the lead. Oh, trouble. Not again. Lane Riggs mm. talked about the night he was having. Came down pit road, made that stop, and around he goes. The caution is out for the fifth time. Zane Smith came to pit road, as I said, but he didn't stop in his box because he knows the caution is out. He'll get the pit under yellow. Can't take a chance on losing a lap. And that's going to keep a lot of trucks a lap down. If he would have went ahead and stopped in his pit and took 15 seconds to make the pit stop, that would have put a lot of trucks back on the lead lap right now until the scoring re re cycles, we're only showing seven trucks on the lead lap. Wow. Interesting that's, turn of events here. That's the worst oh. uh, nightmare for teams is uh, most all the teams have pitted, but anytime there's a caution during green, green flag pit stops, it always mixes things up. So let's see what happened here. Did he get up into the shiny stuff? Oh, yeah. Just loose, though. I don't think he's too high, but just lost control. Man, that's so frustrating. We've seen these racers go right on the edge of what looks like treacherous conditions. As we look, as we look down toward turn two, how scary that looks. I hate to say it, but turn two has been the star of the show all day from practice, qualifying. This race tonight, just treacherous has been the word of the day. The field has cycled by now. We're only showing nine trucks on the lead lap. We had over, I believe, over 20 trucks on the lead lap before the green flag pit stop started. Stuart Fries in the first one, a lap down in 10th. It's nine good trucks, though. As you see, the pace truck's in a weird spot. He's trying to get where he's going. There you see our leader, Zane Smith, all those other trucks need to come around the racetrack. Lawless Allen in this 33 is one of those trucks that's on the lead lap because he has not come to pit road yet. Great work by his guys to keep him out there, keep him on the lead lap. Now he's going to get him a good finish if he can finish it off. So 35 laps to go here at Texas. Under caution for the fifth time this evening. Yep. Lawless Allen is the only surprise that we have up, up in the top 10 right now. So Zane Smith shown as the leader. He will need to pit. Kyle Busch in second. Corey Himes, stay with us. Tomorrow right here on FS1, a bitter rivalry is brewing right here in the Lone Star State. Now Corey Seager and the reigning champion Rangers, they'll battle Jose Altuve and the Astros. It all begins at 4 Eastern on FS1. We'll race in action tomorrow at the Xfinity Series. Cup practice and qualifying. We're up early tomorrow, 1030 Eastern, I believe. How about Big Hall sober on the back straightaway? You can see it's got the running order on the left side, all kinds of content for the fans to soak up. Bruton Smith motto always was, we love what we do for the fans. And that scoreboard, that beautiful TV, is an example of just that. So cool to see that big TV. Now we're showing seven trucks on the lead lap, but as you, if we can pan ahead of Kyle Busch, Kyle will be our leader when Zane Smith comes to pit road. All these trucks, starting with Stephen Parsons, will get the wave around. So I think we will eventually have about 16 trucks on the lead lap. And you know who they're all going to be chasing when it's all said and done?
Kyle Busch. You got that right. Yeah. Yeah. So Zane Smith came down pit road. The caution came out. He had to continue. We've been watching him ride right up behind that pace truck and shut it off. You think he's a little concerned about fuel right now? Oh, I think I think he definitely is. He pitted a lot in lap 83, so it's been only 52 laps, and some of these caution laps, and he's saving fuel. So I think he should be fine till we open pit road. Let's get an update, Amanda. I'm not sure exactly about that from Zane Smith. I'm taking a look at his crew chief right now, Kevin Bellacourt. The tension here is really strong. They needed that pit stop on fuel because they had already pushed it pretty far. But by the time Zane gets here, they are going to focus on finding that balance between between the drag and downforce that's required here in Texas. <laughs> Kevin Bellacourt's like, oh, my gosh, just hang on. Bring it down. Let's get some tires on it. Go contend for this thing. Boom, boom, boom. That's him shutting the engine off and cranking it back up. He's wanting those, wanting the pit road to open. NASCAR is going to run another lap before doing so. You see that line in our scoring pile on the left side of your screen, right below Nick Sanchez. Those are the seven trucks are on, that are on the lead lap. Right now. Right now. That's right. getting ready to change. Yeah. When Zane comes to pit road, that, that will change. So I'm guessing that when we saw Kevin Bellacourt put his hand, head in his hands, that's when he got the news that they're going to go one more lap. Another lap. Team Real Tree. That's a beautiful number seven truck, and it's been up front all night long. Kyle Busch, as solid and as strong as we expected he would be. He's had a lot of contenders. Corey Himes been on his bumper. Christian Eckes, Nick Sanchez, Taylor Gray. They've all been challenging that seven truck, but he's turned them all away so far. So 31 laps to go. And at the end of this thing, the winner of tonight's race will celebrate right there, the speedycash.com victory lane. It's beautiful. It's bright. You see the flames there? We're going to have real flames. Real flames. They do it up here. Flames. And guns. We're going to have and guns and cowboy, cowboy hats. hats. It's going to be all. Todd Bodine has six cowboy hats. Oh, my gosh. Kyle has five, and he's trying to make it six to, to tie more. that record, which would be exciting. We'll see if he can hang on, but how cool. If Zane Smith was able to put the speedycash.com truck into the speedycash.com victory lane. What about those two guys? They got their headsets on hooked together. They can communicate. Did you see that? They're wearing like shorts and t-shirts. What a difference from a <laughs> week ago. It was freezing. I think the spotters were saying there were some snow flurries last year. We just Todd. talked about it. Todd's record could be in jeopardy. You think he's in the Charlotte studio setting pins and needles, wondering if he's going to be able to keep this record alone? Or? I'm, ho I'm hoping he's at home with the cold one. <laughs> here he comes. Pit road is open. Amanda, here comes Zane Smith. Oh, and I can see a sigh of relief from the team as well. They're ready to execute on this pit stop. Kevin Bellacourt told me ahead of the race, if there's someone out here this weekend that can beat Kyle Busch, it's my driver. I want him to come back in here in the truck series and have fun. Well, it looks like, Amanda, he's doing just that. The team's going to work on that truck. You can see the Napa Auto Park uniforms, the pit crew that's taking care of that 91 truck. You come into pit road and you got the Napa Auto Care team on your side. You got to feel pretty good about things. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> good stop for Zane Smith. We'll get back to racing action after this. Stay with us. I like the speed of this 42. That young man's day is coming. Oh, trouble. Caution is out. NASCAR overtime. Let's go. <laughs> got another wreck. Let's do it again. Big push on that outside line. Host of ours thinking three wide. He got there. Hosevar got there. They touched T-Rex. Carson Hosevar <laughs> wins for the first time in his career. It was a day race last year, and gosh, that racing was so exciting all the way to the very end. And Nick Sanchez, heartbreak for him, had led 168 laps from the pole, and it all went down to the wire for him. Craziness ensued at the end of that race. All right, so we had 13 wave arounds. Things are looking more normal, <laughs> like they they were at the start of this uh, third and final stage. And yet 16 trucks now on the lead lap. And we still have the same pursuers. We got Corey Heim, we got Taylor Gray, Christian Eckes, Dick Sanchez, Zane Smith, <laughs> and Kyle Busch leads them all. But man, this thing's gonna be fun. Zane Smith after that pit stop now he'll restart in the sixth position. Lawless Allen in the top 10 and that's a truck that has just been getting better and better. You see the 33 there. I like the progress I've seen from Lawless. Mike Skinner was down in Bristol, 
Martinsville being his driver coach, saw him in the garage area here today. So that's his job to coach this young man. And if you want somebody on your team, you don't want anybody any better than Mike Skinner. He knows a lot about racing these trucks, doesn't he? Didn't he have, what, three poles here in a row? One time Mike Skinner threw or four poles in a row here at this racetrack. Oh, there's our shoes and Taylor Gray elected to take the top side. My, how things have changed. Early in the race, everybody wanted the bottom. Now it's 50-50 at least. Tanner Gray's back there. Tanner, remember, he was one of those that had trouble in practice, went to a backup truck, and he's been digging. Finds himself in the top 10 here. Hasn't had a very fast truck, but he's used strategy and stayed out during that long run there and got himself back in position to get a top 10 finish. There you see some of the trucks a lap down, making their way through. I think the aggression level is going to be ticked up just a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm quite nervous, James. Very close to 10 tenths, I would think. Yeah, OK. You, we've seen this before. There's no give anymore. It's all take. And if you take a little bit too much, you see that shiny part up to the right? That'll bite you. So easy to get pushed out into that shiny part of the racetrack as well. Those three boys racing around Kyle Busch, they're all here for a championship. They say, move this guy out. Let's go for it. Let's settle this deal. Coming green. This Kyle, is going to be intense. Kyle Busch says, uh-uh. I'm a 19-time winner here. He owns 19 cowboy hats and guns from winning here. Trying to do it again tonight. 26 laps to go at the line. Kyle Busch, Corey Heim on the outside. His teammate right behind him. Taylor Gray has been so strong. Look at Christian Eck is all over the bumper of Kyle Busch. Kyle this with the strong turn two is able to drive out into the lead. This battle has just been relentless tonight. Look at this. Much of a fan out here on the back stretch. Three wide into turn three. All the way through the field. Look at Zane Smith slid up the racetrack. The two and Nick Sanchez on the inside of Corey Heim. These guys running two through five need to sort this out so they can pursue Kyle Busch. He's been so strong as you see Eckes able to eke ahead of Corey, excuse me, Taylor Gray. Here comes Corey Heim ahead of Sanchez. Look at that trucks as they snake down the back straightaway. Look at Zane Smith on fresh tires to the inside. He picks up one. Can he make it stay? Sanchez is going to stay right on his right rear quarter panel. Pull that truck back. Wow. This is fun racing. This track is widened out and we're seeing some great action. Bailey Curry dives into turn one. He's back in the 17th position. Lap down. There you see Zane trying to make work of Nick. Can't get around him, can't make it stick. Nick Sanchez has been strong. Ooh, a little bit of a wiggle there. That's gonna be just what Zane Smith, no, oh, you've seen the slip, slipping and sliding off turn four. Another truck up there sliding around, that's Connor Jones, he got out of the groove. Did a nice job hanging onto that 66 truck. Back there, battle for 14, 15, 16th right there. Johnny Sauter's shown some good potential tonight. Kind of gone from the back to the front. Back now. You see more lap down trucks mixed in with these lead lap trucks because of the wave around. We had so many trucks taking the wave around. Johnny they... Sauter high off turn four. I think he might have clipped the wall. He got up out of the groove, and you see the rubber, the Goodyear rubbers. Oh, another oh, crash. Right into the wall. Stuart Friesen. Yellow, 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 yellow. Yellow is out. Sixth caution tonight. Stuart Friesen was able, I believe, to keep it off the wall. That new sponsor tonight looking so good. It was a good run for him. He was running in the 12th position. Got spun around there. Kept it going, I think. A bit of damage on the left front. I'm thinking I'm with Possibly. you, Jamie. Not a lot of damage there. Darn, man. Is that it's Daniel like, Dye's brother? <laughs> he was bummed about the caution, and then he was like, oh, look at us on camera. <laughs> look at oh, that one strike. He... Yeah, this is Johnny Sauter. I mentioned getting out of the groove and watch. Just can't hold onto that truck once you go up there. Minimal damage, though. Johnny does a nice job of just 
keeping the truck pointed in the right direction, and bouncing off down. the wall. Instead of slamming on the brakes, just slowing down. Then here's a look at the big crash. Oh, Chris slips up. Chris oh. Reich gets into Mason Massey. Stuart Friesen just collected in that mess. There's the big crash. Look at that, oh, look right here. The trophy tractor truck. Stephen Parson, a couple of trucks squeezes by on the bottom. Let's hop on board with Matt Crafton and see what he sees. These guys did a great job of slipping through this. Let's ride with Crafton as he sees what happens ahead. Uh, he, saw, <laughs> he saw that opening. I knew he was going to be right on that gas. You got to get out of there. But now yellow. Oh boy, another restart. Yeah. Oh. I don't know how many of these restarts my heart can take. This is just crazy. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. I mean, just the racing all over. It's so good. From front to the back. Great work by our camera guys. I mean, it's easy to look and see that Kyle Busch has led 101 laps. His closest pursuer has led 22 laps, Christian Eckes. But this this thing is not over it by a long shot. It doesn't tell the story does either not. of how good those trucks have truly really been. Been action packed all night long from Texas Motor Speedway. You got to stay with us. See the end. Who goes to victory lane? Sunday on FS1, the stars of NASCAR battle right here in the Lone Star State. The pre race show kicks things off at 2 Eastern, then the green flag flies at 3 30. It all goes down in Texas Sunday on FS1. And with the way this track is widening out, we're going to see some serious action on Sunday. How about this? The boys you'll see in the pre-race and during the race broadcast. Clip Boyer to victory lane right here back in 2006. Jack Daniels and Clip Boyer, those are two of the best pairings I've ever seen in the sport. <laughs> what about Kevin Harvick? November of 2011 in the trucks. He and, goes to victory lane. And Hump Brothers Pizza. I think he likes pizza. Absolutely. That was a good pairing, too. Oh, what a beautiful moon. What a great night that looks like the solar eclipse the other day did you get to see it i did and i didn't look i had those fancy glasses on it looked <laughs> just like that i'm not kidding right in the middle of the day indianapolis it got almost complete that looks like the solar eclipse the other day did you get to see it i did and i didn't look i had those fancy glasses on it looked <laughs> just like that i'm not kidding right in the middle of the day indianapolis it got almost completely dark it was so eerie it was just such an amazing thing to witness big this, restart here jamie <laughs> this is going to be an amazing thing to witness as well these guys trying to Woo. chase down and beat kyle bush late in the going 17 laps to go here at texas motor speedway kyle bush christian eckes on the outside they've all been chasing kyle they've had enough of it Corey heim to the inside wiggles kyle bush they're three wide going into turn two oh, wow I was going to fight back. Oh, I'm that, slipping back. <laughs> what do you need? About six <laughs> inches to clear Kyle Busch? Look at this battle. Oh, Nick Sanchez thought about going three wide. Christian Atkins has been strong. Oh, they're wrecking behind him. Grant Enfinger around. Dean Thompson, the caution, comes out for the seventh time. And you know who your leader is going to be? Christian Eckes. I think he was ahead of Kyle Busch when that caution flew. That's how the timing and scoring shows it. He didn't what? give up. What about Corey Heim? Is he a show or what? <laughs> he said, I'm going in there, Kyle. You're going to have to move over. That was amazing racing. Can you handle another one of these, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> Barb, get me a coffee, please. <laughs> I need some more energy. This is good stuff. I was talking about the cup race on Sunday. I mean, this racetrack is just so racy right now. I think we're going to see some great action tomorrow and Sunday on FS1. Marv, get me a Valium. <laughs> <laughs> what happened back there? All right, from the restart. I think they're going to get through one and two. A lot of action, but no contact. There you see Stephen Parsons squeeze into the bottom. Grant in finger right, up top. Here there. comes Friesen. Five just got loose at the time, yeah. didn't it? What about Matt? 
got off the gas, stayed patient, stayed calm, didn't lock up the brakes. A little bit of contact, but he makes it through. Watch Dean Thompson in the five, just gets Ooh. loose, overcorrects it a bit. Stuart Friesen squeezes by. Stephen Parsons, Roger Carruth. There it goes, whoa, look at Chase the job Purdy. Chase Purdy did. As you mentioned, I think minimal damage for Matt Crafton. That's been... Watch That's Crafton right here. This tonight. is such good driving. You talk about the experience. Look what's in his lap, but he's able to just to squeeze out of the gas, keep calm, and squeeze through. And he had a veteran, Johnny Sauter, right behind him that didn't just drive in the back of him. <laughs> That's good stuff. Let's look at this one more time from the 88 of Matt Crafton. I mean, a bit of bump there. how easy it would have been for him to panic and just cut the wheel to the left or lock up the brakes, but that's not Matt Crafton. The veteran knew exactly what he was looking at and exactly what to do. A little bit of damage, but that's all right. Keep on digging for Matt Crafton. And guess what's finally happening? Raja Karuth is back on the lead lap. <laughs> he needed another caution, and he just got it to get himself back on the lead lap and try to contend for a top 10 finish. Michael, weren't we talking about that about an hour and a half ago? He, uh, I mean, he hasn't given up. There's, there's no give up in that young man. Oh, this has been fun. A lot of damage for Grant and Finger. Stay with us, Christian Eckes, Kyle Busch, another restart. There's been a common theme with Corey Heim, who sits fourth right now. Look at this. Lap number eight, early on, jumps to the inside. That didn't work, but it showed people what he could do. He's gonna try to squeeze down there again here. Has some success doing so, but we're seeing a theme, Bill. Yeah, <laughs> I think this one's more of a block here to keep Majeski from doing the same thing to him. But watch this against the man, Kyle Busch. He squeezes to the bottom. Kyle tries to block. Corey has none of it, blowing dust up, trying to take the lead on the bottom. And guess where he's lined up after the choose here in the great state of Texas. He wouldn't be third on the second on the inside. Would he? he would be on the inside in the third position. This is going to get good. Oh, mm. yeah. And you know, these spotters are like, Christian, listen to this. That 11 truck has been diving three wide every restart. What are you going to do to protect that? Oh, They're going to add a lap here. Now, Kyle Busch has to restart on the outside. We've seen success up there. We have. We've also seen success by pushing three wide to the middle. As we saw on that last restart, after Haim tried to squeeze Kyle Busch, Eckes around the top got the lead. A lot's going to have to do with the launch. And you know what the launch is going to be complicated by? A push. These guys are going to try to shove the truck in front of them ahead to get an advantage. That's what I feel like right there. Woo! Let's go. <laughs> it's coming down to it here in Texas. Should get one to go when they come back by here. Let's get an update on the leader, Josh. Yeah, and to the point of what you guys were talking about on that last restart, they were deciding for the 19 of Christian Eckes whether or not to take the bottom in the big conversation, like you showed on the video. Corey Heim had been diving low, so they told Christian, remember, if you do take the bottom, that is a possibility. The 11 has been doing it all night. So to your point, Mikey, what to do to stop him from doing that? <laughs> That's what the conversation was on the radio. You know, the you, know, you know, Josh, what's so interesting about this? Christian is going to want Corey Heim to shove him. Push, you, push me as hard as you can. I need your push to get me ahead of Kyle Busch and then he's going to know also at the same time he's going to try to unlock from me and get to the bottom and take me three wide as we get to turn one. If I'm Christian I'm going to restart this race. I'm going to stay fairly low and try to stay as low as I can and not give Corey Heim a lane down there. <laughs> you know you'd think Christian Eckes' biggest, biggest concern right now would be that truck on the outside of him Kyle Busch but he can't just focus on Kyle Busch because of what Corey Heim has been doing all night. He's got to have his eyeball on Kyle Busch and his eyeballs on Corey Heim. He's got two. Well, one, one goes one way, the other the other. And then Taylor Gray, another great run for the kid in that 17 truck. Going to start second row outside. Christian Eckes has been just phenomenal on restarts. We saw it last week. He gets the win at Martinsville. I mean, he hasn't faltered on one of these restarts tonight. This like is, you said, get that push from Corey Heim. This is good stuff.
when the leaders cross the line. We've reached our craftsmen. Ten laps to go. Christian Eckes on the inside. Kyle Busch on the outside. Great restart once again by the 19. Corey Heim just behind him. It's such all Christian Eckes. Such a great restart. It didn't give Corey Heim a chance to pull underneath him. But now he's trying to do it. Eckes edges ahead. Here comes Kyle Busch. He's going to go to the back bumper of the 19. Taylor Gray coming up as well. Fan out somewhat, but Christian Eckes. Look at Corey Heim. He's looking to the inside. Christian Eckes leads with nine laps to go. Kyle Busch just behind him. Corey Heim with a look. Taylor Gray right back there. Nick Sanchez in fifth. And Tanner Gray still up there in the seventh spot. Oh, out of the groove a bit is Eckes, or is Kyle just going so low and made him look high? Look at Kyle using every part of this racetrack to get an edge. Look at this battle. Corey Himes loving this. Can he take him three wide? He's going to have a run off turn four. Eight laps to go. They're six feet apart for the lead. Corey Heim is right there. Throw a blanket over the leaders. Kyle Busch takes that lead again, checks out to see ya, boys. Oh, and Christian Eckes jumps the cushion, goes up into the slick stuff, and loses ground. Just like that, Christian Eckes goes from the lead all the way back to fourth. And Corey look at Heim. the lead that Kyle Busch has now after this one lap. A half-second lead for Kyle Busch over Corey Heim. Look at Daniel Dye, race of his career here tonight, running competitively up for the... Oh, he got Watch sideways. It. That's just craziness. Sideways at 180, but I don't think he ever let off the gas. Taylor Gray slips up. I would have slipped up too if I saw all that going in front of me. <laughs> Matt Crafton had that damage on the last caution. Back there battling Raja Karuth for the 14th spot. Raja on the outside. Raja spent almost all this entire race a lap down, and now he's gaining positions. This has been the theme all night long, just racing from front to back. <laughs> These truckers, and look at this, Kyle Busch, they gave him fits for a couple laps after that restart. Still holds a half-second lead. This is a great battle for second. This might be one of Kyle Busch's coolest wins with the pursuit that he's been under all night long. These kids just trying everything they can to beat the veteran, to beat the man. Can they get it done? He's putting them in his rearview mirror right now. Raja's trying to pick up another spot. Lawless Allen, the 33 truck. What a run for him tonight. You got to give it up for Lawless Allen. He is just doing a great job. Raja trying to work his way through the field. Gets a little bit close there to the 66 of Connor Jones. Drags a splitter on the inside. Four laps to go. That last caution, Chris Wright, Grant Enfinger with big hits. Both have been checked and released. Look at this. Corey Heim reeling him in, boys. Oh, this is good stuff. He shrunk that gap. Does he have enough time? As they come out of turn four, looking at three laps to go. Corey Heim got the win at Circuit of the Americas. He's going to be there. I think you'd like to see Nick Sanchez be able to squeeze up to the back of him, maybe give him that push in the draft. We talked about the draft in these trucks. He would love to have that assist. Kyle Busch has led 109 laps tonight. The guys around him haven't made it easy. No, they haven't. Watch that draft pull him up to Kyle Busch. And the closer that two gets to the 11, the bigger the draft will be. You see the 11 move out of the wake of Kyle Busch's truck, trying to get some fresh air down on that nose. This isn't anything unusual. We've seen last lap passes here at Texas a lot, and that's exactly what Corey Himes plotting on. Can he get there? White flag. Final lap. One lap to go. Can Kyle Busch hold him off? Does Corey Heim have enough time? We talked about that wins record here. Todd Bodine holds it with six. Kyle Busch wants to match it. <laughs> He's coming. Momentum. Look at that momentum. 
Down the back stretch into turn three. Oh, Kyle Busch with the advantage. Another shot here out of turn four. Kyle Busch does it. He wins it at Texas Motor Speedway. His sixth career win here. And he ties that record set by Todd Bodine. gave him a run for it. My heart is beating. There was that was four, exciting. Four or five of them all day long gave him a uh, run for it. Nick Sanchez hangs on to that third spot. Christian Eckes and Zane Smith rounds out the top five. Daniel Dye in sixth. The Gray Brothers seventh and eighth. And Stefan Parsons in ninth spot. Great job. Just Great ahead run. of Ty Majeski, Lawless Allen we talked about a lot. He come home in 11th just outside the top ten. Raja recovered for a nice, nice 12th place finish. Man, that was some great racing. When you know how hard it is to win one of these things, and Kyle Busch, you know, he's used to just driving away from these kids. That ain't happening anymore. He had to race Corey Heim, Sanchez, Eckes, Zane Smith, Taylor Gray. He had to race all those guys. Well, we heard all day how hard it is to pass. I mean, this, this race delivered. There was passing from start to finish. Kyle Busch, of course, we knew he'd be tough. Led 112 laps tonight. Christian Eckes led 31. Nick Sanchez, 16. What? Zane Smith had eight laps led. What, what if you read the paper in the morning, you didn't watch the race, and you say, Kyle Busch won and led over 100 laps. They just dominated. There wasn't even a race. And that's not even near the, what the story was. That's why you got to hang on and watch these truck races ah. start to finish. And watch this. Future Hall of Famer right here, Kyle Busch. He loves winning so much, he doesn't care what series it comes in. Look at these colors for Kyle Busch. Real tree. We'll get to see him truck. one more time this year, right in the truck series. We will. We'll see him at Darlington for his fifth and final race. It's got to feel good. It's been tough on Sundays for Kyle and his RCR team. See that rowdy bow. Well, what an amazing job that Spire Motorsports. They bought KBM out, bought Kyle's team out, and haven't skipped a beat. And Kyle still calls into the meeting, still very much a part of this team. Brian Patty, the crew chief, setting that truck up. That was officially the second closest margin of victory at Texas Motor Speedway. One-tenth of a second. Kyle Busch, Rowdy Nation's got to be happy, Amanda. And it is a milestone win here at Texas as if this is the 50th race here at Texas. It comes as your 66th career victory in the truck series at a place that you now have six wins. What have you figured out about Texas, Kyle? <laughs> um, great team, everybody here at, uh, at Spire. Appreciate Brian Patty and everybody that was able to work so hard to uh, prepare us a really fast Realtree Silverado. So um, thanks to Team Chevy, thanks to Realtree, their first NASCAR win, so Mr. Um, Mr. Jordan's at home. I know uh, Tyler's here, so exciting to have the, those guys with us and uh, going to go celebrate in victory lane and carry these bright colors there. I told him I wanted to do it for him, so glad we could. There was a group of guys that definitely held you accountable tonight. Michael Walter said this might be one of your coolest wins in the truck series. Would you agree? No, no, there's cooler, but uh, they definitely kept me honest. I'll give them that. So, um, you know, I remember back... Uh, Man, I want to say it was 2005 or 2006, maybe 2007, something like that at Atlanta where I had to come from 15th with two to go. So that one was a little bit more exciting. That was a lot of fun, but crazy all in the same breath. But, um, you know, Corey kept us honest right there. Um, he started to find that top over there and to get some momentum over there. I tried it with three to go and I chattered really bad. So my front just wasn't working over there, but um, I needed more laps on my tires to be able to get up there to make that work. But he made it, got to my rear bumper getting into three and I just kind of was like, I don't know which way to go. So I ran the middle and then darted bottom and then he slipped up top. And so I, I guess we had enough of gap after that. Congratulations, Kyle. Sound like he liked it pretty good. Yeah. And Corey Heim comes home second place here at Texas tonight. We saw you working those final restarts, trying to make different lines work. What more could you have done to catch Kyle? Yeah, it just seemed like a big track position game at the end there. Um, of course, we would get really big runs down the straightaways, but once you get to the corner, it's uh, really hard to stay behind somebody and keep momentum. So, um, yeah, just did all I could there. Tried to take him through in the last restart and got the caution, unfortunately, and then uh, just tried to build a run on him, but he's just too good you know he just does a really good job so um, really happy with our run tonight I mean we got stage points to finish second I feel like we were 
probably a fifth place draw. Can I admittedly struggle here a little bit uh, at this racetrack? So uh, to finish second here is a good day for us, and uh, we'll build on it and get better. The top 10 streak stays alive for Corey Heim, Jamie. No doubt it does. I love hearing his thoughts on Kyle Busch. He's just so good, hard to beat, but what a run for Corey Heim. Finishes one position short. The Rowdy Bow will be back at Texas Motor Speedway to wrap things up after this. After last week's exciting weekend in Phoenix, the NHRA Mission Foods Drag Racing Series stays out west, but is in Las Vegas for the first four wide race of the year. 44,000 horsepower of qualifying fun is coming up next after trucks only on FS1. And Kyle Busch has made it to the speedycash.com victory lane. Continues his interviews. I see his wife, Samantha. Kids in victory lane. It's a great feeling. Kyle Busch picks up his 20th win at Texas. That's a lot of cowboy hats. It's on fire down there in victory lane. <laughs> no doubt. Such a fun victory lane. A great race today. We saw it. It's a big day tomorrow, too, Jamie. Yep, tomorrow in FS1, you see it there practicing qualifying for the Cup Series bright and early, 9.30 a.m. local time. I'll be on that covering the storylines. And then race day at 12.30 Eastern. And Andy's Frozen Custard 300 at 1.30 Eastern. It's a lot of race in action. Those drivers were really happy with what they saw tonight when that groove widened out. Certainly were. And what action we saw. This is going to be a great weekend. Race day at 7 p.m. Eastern, the Truck Series race at 8 Eastern. Meanwhile, the trucker's going to take a couple weeks off. <laughs> That's got to be hard, especially when you're coming off a really good run. You want to keep that momentum going. Well, congratulations to Kyle Busch getting the win here at Texas Motor Speedway. We'll see him back in his cup car tomorrow morning. Hope you enjoyed what you saw tonight from Michael Waltrip and Phil Parsons. Josh Sims, Amanda Busick, and our entire Fox Sports team. I'm Jamie Little. Thanks so much for being with us. NHRA Qualifying from Las Vegas is next.